Show. Powered 101. Jay Thomas, the host. Jay Thomas, the host. I, I can't stand it. I tell you. I love you guys in the back. Jay Thomas Show. It's the weirdest and the wildest. Horrible. Call 888-STERN-101. Your name is? Jay Thomas. The Jay Thomas Show. The Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas. No idea. Lucky to be alive. What kind of start is that? Oh, we're on the. I'm so sorry. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get it together, pal. Um. Well, uh, uh, I apologize. I don't have a cold. Uh, this is um, <clears throat> from yelling uh, at the television last night. I thought the Saints were going to lose that thing. Man, I don't know what they were doing. Um, Lance Harding. From Boston, Massachusetts, sent me an email. I woke up this morning, first email I got. I guess the leprechaun fell out of the Saints' ass. <laughs> you know, you can't. You know, you can't pull against the Saints. It's uh, it's bad for you. It's bad for you to pull against them. They they help the city and all that other shit. I guess that's over now, right? Yep. I thought we were going to have another tragedy that we could glom onto, you know, the oil spill. But apparently, this oil spill that I've been trying to do a documentary about how awful it is, it seems to have gone away. It was the worst environmental uh, catastrophe in the history of the United States. Are we sure that it was really oil? <clears throat> Maybe I it was don't like know. trick oil? I don't know where it went. In fact, ink. Mm. no one knows where it went. And now they're saying, well, you know, it's out there, but these microbes are eating it. And they must be these big, fat, oil-filled microbes. They must be huge, whatever they are. So, um, yeah, it is odd. So they can't use the oil spill. But anyway, so they, they made it through. But before the um, <clears throat> the game, I get home and my wife has the, the martinis uh, ready to go. Uh, a couple of buddies come over. And we're going to watch the Saints. So I go, oh, I got to do this uh, fantasy channel uh, over at Sirius. I got this fantasy football thing. So I get my team, and I'm looking at it, and I'm waiting for the phone call. And so it's like 4.30 my time. The game starts at 5.30. By 5.15, when this guy called, I'm like three or four cocktails, you know, into the evening. Into You're the feeling afternoon. good. I've had, like, nothing to eat. It's 5.15, and I talk whatever I talk, and we're getting along. His name is Jeff somebody or other, you know. Sounds like a really nice guy. Boss or something? And he said he played football for Mesa uh, uh, State. And um, <clears throat> I'd say, oh, I played small college, and I, you know, tried to play arena football. And, we're, and we start talking, and so I go, um, hey, man, you married? No, I said, do you live in the city? He goes, um, no, I live in Connecticut. Why? I said, because, you know, sometimes when I come in town, maybe you and I could get together. But I say it like that, you know. To creep him out. Well, it was weird. You could hear his producer going. <laughs> so, then, so then the guy goes, uh, no, I'm married. He says he's married to me. I go, yeah, I'm married too, man. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? You and me getting together. Huh? <laughs> like that. It was so weird. We both so, got something to lose there. So Maybe. then. It's over, you know, like, I hang, and I call Garrett, I go, oh, my God, I was just completely loaded on the fantasy channel, and I think I became, like, a homosexual with the guy. That happens but, sometimes if you get the wrong combo of drinks in you. <laughs> you, get, you just go completely You get queer. homo, yeah. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine in Vegas, We, uh, my buddy Matt, we met at uh, Blackjack Dealer School, which is a blast, let me tell you. And, uh, and we, we had this game between us where we would leave each other voicemails that would like try and creep the other guy out, see who gives up on the, on the gay Olympics first. <laughs> so he'd be like, Hey man, you know, just in the shower, I was thinking about you, you know, give me a call. And so <laughs> the winning one was when I called him and I go, Hey, driving into work. I, uh, 
saw a cloud kind of look like you. Give me a call. <laughs> Miss you. And he calls yeah. me back. He goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? A cloud? I was sitting yesterday in the in the lesbian coffee shop I go to before I come to work, and and the, and the coffee ran out or something. The guy says, uh, "Oh, senor, I make you more coffee. You sit right here, be comfortable." So I got nothing to read. I'm just sitting there, you know, waiting for the coffee to be brewed. Big giant construction guy is sitting on a chair that looks like a, a toothpick up Richard Simmons' ass. Right, he's so big on top of this chair. Hi. And another guy about my, but both tough guys, like construction guys or whatever. The other guy's sitting there about my size, and he's leaning forward, and he goes, it, 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 and man, it changed my life. It changed my life. And the big guy's just staring at him. He goes, I, I was just flipping through the channels, and it was an episode of the Andy Griffith Show. Which every ever, construction guy wants to hear. He says, do you ever watch it? And the big guy doesn't speak. He, he kind of nods his head a little bit, you know. He goes, it was the last ten minutes. It changed my life. I tell you, it's it's the episode where they accuse Opie of stealing a quarter. Have you seen it? And the big guy doesn't say anything. I have nothing to read and nowhere to look, so I'm just you know kind of sitting across from the big guy. His eyes start darting, and this other guy will not leave this episode alone. He goes so. Andy comes in. And he's, he apparently has punished Opie. And he goes, I know, remember, I'm only seeing the last 10 minutes. And he goes, he only saw taste. enough, he only saw enough to change his life. He goes, and so Opie said a, a mystery man had come in and given him the quarter, right? Had given him the quarter. But, but, but Andy, Andy didn't believe it, see? And, and I gotta tell you something. This, this guy says, it was the best written, best acted thing I've ever seen. Like, this big guy. Did this guy just get a TV like the week before? I don't know. I don't know. He would not stop. I'm going, man, please bring me this coffee. Please let me get out of here. This is so Like you're uncomfortable for the guy. It was awful. And it goes on. Finally, the guy goes, so so Andy's going to spank Opie, which, by the way, he goes with this, which, by the way, you know, they did back then. Like <laughs> yeah, like it was so, so taboo. The, he goes, and so Opie says, uh, Paul, <laughs> Paul, I didn't steal the quarter. And I thought the big guy was going to, I thought he was going to launch from the chair. The guy leans forward and he goes, and everyone said, you know, Andy, he's lying. And Andy said, you know what? Um, I don't know what happened, but I believe my son. And, of course, some homeless guy had given him the quarter or whatever, and nobody could prove it. I'm I'm watching this going, Jesus, why are you just it was really it was odd. It's like and when guys just don't like to connect. I mean, they just don't. I mean, it's almost like if he was a Muslim, they would have stoned him to death for those feelings. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they they uh guys yeah. guys will tap out pretty quick when you want to get real with them. Now two seats away are two, you know, straight women. Their faces are two inches away from each other going, well, that's what I told Betty. That's what I told, that's what I told Sue also. Yeah, nothing They can stops talk that. like that for hours. Yeah. They can actually do it forever. And they get really close to each other when they're doing it. You want to go to no the bathroom? One, yeah, let's go to the bathroom. No one accuses them of being uh, gay or anything. Go that's ask, the, you that's know, the you, weird thing. You go ask your buddy today, hey, come with me to the bathroom real quick. Take a look at his face after you drop that sentence on him. What do they do in the bathroom? It's almost like when they're sitting down, one guides them over the toilet or something. It's like, you know, like what, you know, those, those <laughs> airplanes. Spotter. When they're coming in, you know, they're bringing the plane in with the lights, you She's know. got the red cone flashlight. Because, you know, women don't like their ass to touch the seat, so they have to hover. Ooh. I'm thinking, you know, maybe somebody's got a, I don't know what they do in there. Back what, it what, up, Debbie. Drop it down. You know, what are they... What, what, what do you do with another person in the in the toilet? What I is it? They got you, a, I think they got a vending machine in there or something. I don't know what you talk. Going. What do you? What is it you do? I mean, it sounds like an old you know comedy bit, but what is that? What do they talk about? In my know? mind, I see it like this: they're both in the stall, and uh, and one puts her hand underneath the other stall and goes, "Pull my finger, bitch!" And then they you know they're ripping ass. Or... <laughs> of all the guys, they have a girl. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I saw the movie The American, and uh, it's being called uh, The 
most disappointing film of the summer. Uh, the well, first uh, of all, the premise has like been done over five hundred million times. Well, George Clooney is very good, and he is a really nice guy. I've I've known him forever and ever. Uh, he is a wonderful guy. Uh, he is a guy you immediately like. He lives in Italy, and he does this. Basically, it's a foreign film, and he's the only American in the movie, right? And the rest of them are all struggling with English, which I always think is funny. Yeah. And they've cut out all of the sex scenes. Um, he has he he uh, meets this hooker in it, and he's he's a gunsmith. He's not an assassin. He makes the guns that the assassins use. Okay. But he'll shoot you in a minute. Right. He's really good at shooting. His family was killed somehow. No. No. There's no background. There's no background. In the first two minutes, he gets laid and something goes down and he says to the woman, he shoots these two guys and she goes, I think she was an, she was an American. She goes, Oh my God, what do you, they're like at a beautiful cabin. She goes, What are you doing with the gun? He goes, I'll tell you later. I had to kill these two guys. Here, go get the police. He just screwed her. She goes to run for the police. Bam! He shoots in the back of the head. He had just screwed her. And and he was sitting there, you know, like having a nice time with her, but I guess she was the witness to something, right? Mm -hmm. So then the rest of the movie, people are trying to kill him. They never tell you why. There's never like he's an ex this or he's a, he did something. They never, and he goes to a town in Italy, and there are no people ever on the street. No one. He walks down the street. There's not a soul on the street. And, he, and a priest comes. So there's George Clooney. Then he meets a hooker, and there's a priest. And they murder all kind of people in a little village. Sounds um, like a Jackie joke, right? Hooker, murder, and a priest walk into a bar. Well, they shoot about five people in this little village, and then in the next scene you go, wouldn't you think the town would be surrounded by the Italian police? It's like, you know, it's a, it, it would be like going to, you know, pick some little town somewhere. I mean, I'm talking about... Tehachapi, California. That's, that's, that's huge. I'm telling you, there's like, these are towns with like, you know, 150 people in them, right? And so he kills off, and every time he shoots somebody, a Vespa comes by. That's the only, meow. Meow, like that, right? <laughs> well, they shoot a guy in a Vespa, too. He comes There's by a big shoot. Vespa chase scene? There is. <laughs> he gets on the Vespa, and he chases a guy in a little tiny, like, Italian Ford. You know, I mean, like, you know those, you know those cars that are called the smart car? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, you have to be a complete idiot to drive <laughs> right. a smart you look car. You like a fucking dumb shit in a smart you know, car? Yeah. It, it, you want to walk by a smart car and you want to lean down and go, I can't wait until you're in any kind of an accident because yeah. you will not live through it. Okay, you, in You're in state. a tic-tac. Right. You understand that? It looks like a bed bug. They, they looked at a bed bug and they said, let's bring a car that looks just like a fucking bed bug. Right? <laughs> so he's going all over and he meets this hooker, right? And um, he, he has anal with this hooker, but they don't show. They show him eating or eating her out. And they just show her top, and she's moaning and everything else. But how do you know it's anal? Because when he turns her over, she's going slow, slowly, slow, ah, oh, slow down. And, and they keep her over, and they don't show you Clooney. They don't show him. Then they show his arm come in, and he's just, you know, struggling to get, you know, listen, she's a hooker. He's not struggling to get it into the, you know, the main opening. Right. So, and she's going, you know, screaming and yelling and all this. And so finally they're smoking a cigarette. And she's hugging him and he goes, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to pretend with me like that. I'm thinking what pretend he's, he meant don't pretend it hurt, you know, like, like you're a hooker. You don't have to act like you have any emotions or anything hurts you or whatever. Yeah, there's I'm a security at, guard in there. All right. I'm looking Not around, that tight. I know. I'm looking around going, she's a hooker. She's had like, she's probably had a Vespa up there. You know, yeah. throw and yell. So. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he's going down on her, right? Yeah. You, know, you see her go in the bathroom that you close the door and then, then you heard meow like that. So, um, uh, I'm watching it. And so he, he's with the hooker and I think, 
I want to yell. I want to yell at the screen like when you like we're in like a like what like a rapper movie and the black yeah. people yell. I go. I go. Don't fall for the bitch. <laughs> Don't fall for that bitch. You know, look, I, uh, guys that fall for hookers and strippers. I I am sorry. There is no in in my end, and I started as a strip show comic at 16 years old. They never ever change. Whatever is broken inside of them or whatever they like, it may be something they like or whoever screwed them up, they never get okay. Well, how about the guys that show up at like 3 a.m. to pick them up after they've been grinding their chooch? Oh, my God. Every day they've jerked guys off. It's like and the guy's standing there. Oh, Oh, you want me to grab your makeup bag, honey? Okay. Oh. retards. It's uh, And, you know, I used to, you know, meet guys and I, it's blah, 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 and they go, you know, I'm dating a stripper. Or I, I go, what? And they would go, you know, man, you know, she's really cool and she's only doing it to get through school. And I'm going, no, she's not. She is completely fucked up and yeah. they never get okay. In the in the old cowboy movies, some guy would marry the whore in town or whatever the deal is. Trixie. Yeah. Um, the best cowboy movie ever is called The Long Riders. It's probably made 20 years ago, and they used um, the Carradine brothers. Everybody in it, they were brothers. The Carradine brothers. I forget what other brothers were in it. Swayze's but, represented? I don't, I don't know. Brothers. What, what, the brothers. Smothers. <laughs> brothers were in it. But so um, uh, David Carradine uh, the, and their long riders, they have those long coats. They go into this town, and... Um, he fall, you know, he's screwing around with this, with this, uh, with this hooker. And she keeps saying to him, you know, wh- why won't you marry me? And he goes like this, cause you're a whore. Right. It's it, every time he says it, I died laughing. Well, and the only reason these guys fall in love with these whores is oh. cause nobody else is going to fuck them. So whatever it takes for them, you know, if they buy him a car or, or, you know, a bunch of fucking dances, then they get laid. Yeah. Then they're in love cause. Somebody spread their legs for him. So everybody's going, don't ruin it. Don't ruin the American. I can't ruin the American for it's you. Ruined, I cannot. Right. It's ruined already. It's ruined. And I'll tell you what. He gets in this car, and he drives up and down. And in the middle of the movie, there's like eight people in the movie theater. I hear a guy go like this. Oh, Jesus, he's in the car again? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's white guys talking to the screen at a no, movie. But it's they like, give a review. Yeah, you know, it's like it's and then and then you hear a guy in front of me going, <sighs> you know, it's 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 in the car. Remember, there is no one in the town. Then there's the the uh, the Italian leather hard sole shoes on the thousand year old. You know, bricks, uh, the, you know, the, the, the cobblestone streets. So in the movie, you, 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 you know, I have my little foley here. You, you, you hear like, uh, you hear that all over town, right? They got the guns and you hear. And so they stop. So get, just guess like what a, George. It's like a Gregory Hines movie over there. <laughs> guess what George Clooney does. Guess what he does. Uh, just guess. Goes barefoot. Yes! <laughs> he takes off these giant O.J. Simpson, you know, <laughs> these o- <laughs> and, he, and And remember, there is no one awake in this town, day or night. No one is ever anywhere. There'll be an old woman, and she'll open like a window, and Clooney thinks he's going to get killed. He stares at her. She looks at him, and then she clo- – that's it. This town has nobody in it, right? So – he takes his shoes off, and I'm thinking, if I did that, the first step I made right on a rock or something, right, I would hurt my foot. <laughs> he chases a guy, and, of course, you hear the guy going. Now, Clooney, and then you hear Clooney going. And, of course, he kills the guy, right, because the guy can't hear him. I'm thinking, Jesus, why don't the bad guys ever have any brains, right? Now, does he leave this town? No. He calls a guy up and he says, how does this guy know I'm here? And I'm thinking, because the guy you're calling apparently is trying to kill you. There's nothing so, worse than figuring out a movie in five minutes. So you know? he goes back and, of course, he takes the hooker to dinner. They go to dinner. 
And they're going to dinner, and he make he's making these guns. He's making all these guns for this. He's making guns for a woman, and you're in the movie theater, and you're saying to yourself, he is making the gun that he is going to be killed with, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, it goes from like an assassin movie to how it's made on the Discovery Channel. All of a sudden, also, it was absolutely. The other thing is, is you're going now. If I know that the broad is going to kill him. Right. If I know that you don't, if you're going to hide, wouldn't you hide in a town with a lot of people? You know, wouldn't you want to be, you know, everywhere he walks, you can shoot him clean as a whistle. No, this movie had no children in it. There was no school. There was no church. Oh, excuse me. The woman's about to kill him. A school bus pulls up and like 20 Italian kids in little red uniforms get out. She calls, guess who on the phone? The Ooh. guy Clooney's been calling the whole time. Right. And he goes, did you get him? And she goes, no, but I will tonight. Okay. So he makes the gun that's going to, that is going to kill him. Okay. Makes the gun. But I, I well, I was guess. Say, I bet he, I Go bet ahead. He, get... I bet he put some special feature in the gun. Guess. Yes. Where at the last second, right when yes. she thinks she's going to kill him. You're the best. It doesn't work. <laughs> she she gets up in a building, and I'm sitting there going, he's kissing the hooker as the Virgin Mary prese- procession is going by, right? Meanwhile, the, another flaw, no hooker yeah. will kiss you, all right? They have right. A, a strict rule on that, and I've tried to fight it many times. She is, She has met him at a procession, you know, for the Virgin Mary. The priest is there. Every woman in the movie is gorgeous. The assassin is gorgeous. Hooker is go- Everybody is... He, uh, you know, Clooney has no body fat. Everybody is, is perfect, right? The girl lifts the gun up, and she's going to shoot Clooney in the back of the head while he's kissing the hooker, right? She pulls the trigger, and the gun blows her eye out, Okay. It back. He he said uh-huh. it to backfire. He built it backwards. He did a little whirly yes, early on it. Built it backwards. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. The bullet came out of the eyepiece or Didn't whatever. Didn't see that one coming, did you, Hooker? She rolls off the roof, lands on the ground, and her head, uh, her eye is out. Right. He runs over to her, and in her dying words, he goes, "Who sent you? Right. No, no. Who do you work for?" Everybody in the movie theater goes. The same guy you do. <laughs> and she says, the same, the same man you do. Like that. So that's, that's the movie. That's when, the whole, now, the, you know, and you can go to it and go, oh, Jay Thomas ruined it. I can't ruin this movie. You can't ruin it. He drives up and down in a car, Vespas go by, and then you hear him in the street. And then, Oh, don't, don't! I've never had it back there before. I swear to God. And when it, when the movie was over, did it did when the people were leaving? Did it sound like this? <laughs> the American. If the I would if I would you know had built a backwards gun and it shot a hooker in the eye and she falls off a roof and lands on the ground, what I would have done? I would have kissed her on the mouth and then banged her without a rubber because there's nothing she could do about it at that point. And every woman in it. Where's your pimp now? Every woman in it had full-on vaginal hair. Every one of them. Ah, That's the new thing. I'm tapping out right there. I when I first I'm I'm watching the I go. One woman looked like she had Art Garfunkel between her legs. You know, know or his kids. (laughs) Poor kids inherited that fucking. (laughs) You see that? That's the new thing. You know, the full the full. We had this discussion. Well, someone was asking. Uh, yesterday, they said, well, why do you think um, that fashion thing started? I believe it started in the porn industry so you could see the outline of the vagina and the whole thing. I mean, that's the only reason that I think it started. And well, then it, regular people started doing it. It started because a vicious rumor spread that uh, that a vagina was actually pretty. So what they did was they took all the hair off of it and, you know, <laughs> you see it for the hatchet wound that it is. Oh, God. And then you move on. 
Oh, uh, somebody sent me a picture of a tree that looks like someone with their legs open, and the people, and it's like an Indian. And people go up to it and they worship it. <laughs> you know, there, what? there was a, a chick, <laughs> and they oh, touch it. Tree. <laughs> <laughs> I dated a chick once. Uh, she took her pants off. I thought I was in the Carolina pine forest. It was <clears throat> just a mess. You think they're they're in the in the movies when the actresses show bush? Do you think like some of them are merkins? You know, like pu- pubic wigs. Oh yeah. You think some of them are just shaved and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I, we don't I be think in Europe, coach. I think in Europe that you know there are women, and and I remember going out with a woman in France, and she didn't shave her legs and didn't shave under her arms, and um, you know they clip yeah, and all. She's called but, a guy. Go ahead. No, no, no. But I mean, you know, I think that then they started, you know, shaving and all. But apparently, it's it, the on natural thing is uh, on natural is starting to come back. Um, you know, I don't care one way or the other, but um, it. There are a lot of people that say the shaving is a, you know, is a pedophile thing. I mean, it's like makes you think you're with some, you know, virgin when I used to or make little my, girl or whatever. Well, yeah. I don't agree with that. But when I used to make my wife shave in the, in the van with no windows, then I felt a little creepy. <laughs> uh, let's go to Phineas of Arkansas. Uh, you claim, Phineas, now line two, uh, you claim to have seen... The very film that I was discussing, you mean The Long Riders? You just happened to see that this week? Well, I saw it uh, about, you know, when it first came out. And uh, here, not too long ago, it's been on HBO or, right. or Stars I, or something like that. Yeah, Showtime or one of them. And I watched it again. And don't you love it when he, uh, the, the woman, Pamela Reed plays the whore. And he kept, uh, and doesn't he say to her, I can't, I'm not going to marry you. You're a whore. You know. The way he, his delivery, every time he says it, is hilarious. He goes, she goes, why won't you make an honest woman of me? He goes, because you're a whore. <laughs> and he drags the whore part out. It just cracks me up every time. But, I mean, uh, I, I actually had a woman say to me once, she said to me, don't you think we have feelings? Don't you think we we mean? And I go, I no, I don't. I don't I I don't know what happened to you or whatever but you're like a you're you're basically a dish rag that is attached to like some flesh parts and guys literally wipe themselves on you and think nothing of you the only way you can save yourself is to move completely away from wherever the hell you are and and change your name and act like you weren't a stripper or a whore because that shit follows your ass for the rest of your life. That's it. Well, instead of a dish rag, wouldn't that make her a cum rag? I guess. Wouldn't well, I wasn't. Up? I didn't need. I wasn't going to go graphic. That was filthy, Phineas. Yeah, filthy. Well, well listen. Uh, the Quaid brothers played the youngers. Uh, the Carradines played. Uh, the, the, wait no, a minute. The, 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 Qua- the Quaid brothers were in it. Uh, the Carradine right. brothers. Who were the other brothers? The, the Travolta the brothers? Others, and the Keaches were the Jameses. And then oh, the, Christopher the, Guest. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Go ahead. Uh, Christopher Guest and his brother played the Ford brothers that killed Jesse James. At the end. <laughs> Christopher Guest from Saturday Night yes. Live? And he, and he and has can... a brother. He has a, a, a brother uh, called so they America's, the, they were America's the, Guest. Is they brother. were the gay brothers. Of the Western. Let's shoot him, Pa. <laughs> you know what would have been funny if... if uh... Frank and Sylvester Stallone should have been in it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Watch I like this. Kevin's idea. Hey, man, I'm a whore. Fuck you. What? <laughs> I'm a fuck you up, man. You know, like. I, I just like the idea of the Smothers Brothers riding into town. One of them's got that upright bass strapped to the back of the horse. <laughs> And then uh, Tommy Phine- kills him with a yo-yo. Tommy kills him with a yo-yo. <laughs> Good. Hey, Phineas, some famous yeah. person <laughs> named their kid Phineas, like some movie star or something. Who who named their kid Phineas recently? I know it's catching on. That's uh, it is name that's coming back. Phineas, Phineas is the new. You know what? Yeah, you- Phineas is the new Apple. Of kids' names. Phineas is like pubic hair. It's on the way back. You know? <laughs> no, let me tell you this about the pubic hair thing. Yeah. The reason I like it shaved is because you don't have to go through all that hair to go to get to what you want to get to when you're when you're going down on her. <laughs> and also, it's better for the woman because then the uh, the labia major comes into play as opposed to having that hair all covering it. You know, and you can Thank get you, a little doctor. lick in it. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Phineas. <laughs> There when I go. was a when I was a strip show comic, I would come out and do my bit, and I'd have to stand like next to the bar or whatever, or on the top of the bar, and they had the poles there. 
there would be guys that would come and they would get a drink and they'd have a cigarette and they would examine it like they were, you know, gynecologists. They would, they would have one guy that, the, 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 so the, creepy. The ash would get so long in his cigarette <laughs> that when I'm, I'm waiting, you know, I'm, I'm just off the side there waiting to go back up, you know, and, and he would like lean down with the cigarette, take a puff and then put his head and like look. But, but it was like, I, I wanted, I wanted to say it because I was afraid they're going to kill me. I was going to go. What the? Heck? Are you are you expecting something to crawl out of there? I mean, what are you but, looking for? You know, what's it? It'd be funny, wouldn't it? Is as if you you go to your wife's gynecologist and you realize it's the guy that goes to the strip bar. Yeah, he's you know. smoking in the in the examining room. All right, thank you, Phineas. By the way, see y'all later. Uh, yeah. Rich Rich just passed the word on that it's uh, Julia Roberts's kid, Phineas. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Well, she's Southern, that's why. And uh, yeah, Phineas. And it's a is Hebrew kid. name. It is. Meaning the oracle, one of two sons of the priest of Eli in the Old Testament. You know what I love about the Internet? And I, I've said this before. We, there's no, you don't, you're not going to need college or Nothing. any kind of education. Garrett, who is the dumbest guy I've ever met. What? <laughs> you are. You are the stupidest. I worked with you in the last two years. It's Hebrew. You know nothing. You don't, you don't care about anything That's and you know true. nothing. Goes on the Internet and, and becomes like Rabbi Hinkelmeyer all of a sudden, you know. By the way, Jay, Phineas happens to be a Hebrew name that means shaved vagina in Hebrew. <laughs> you know. Jay, uh, you were incorrect Idiot. when talking about hydrogen fuel. <laughs> well, it's the truth, though. Why, why go to school if, if you need to answer a question? I mean, it'll only take you a few more moments. So let's say somebody says to you, hey... Um, what is the formula for, um, you know, uh, hydrogen dioxide? Okay, give me a moment. You type it up. You know, H2O2, okay? I mean, why do you have to go to school to learn it? You can just do it. And then you go, well, how do you make that? Um, hold on a minute. You type it. And it's right there. You don't have to go to school. No, like... If if somebody says, oh, I have this incredible lump, you know, right, you can go online, look up lumps, and they'll have that lump. We did it with goiters one day. Yeah. We looked at every, I can now diagnose the different goiters, not only in humans, but in trees. Yeah. <laughs> but every truth. symptom you look up on the web is cancer. <clears throat> right. It always ends in cancer. Right. Well, the other day, and for about four days... I had a metallic taste in my mouth. So I yell up to my wife. I go, look up what metallic taste means. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, uh, it either means that you have been eating too many, too many acidy foods. Or you're dying. Or it's diabetes. Or there's a quarter stuck in your ass. You know? <laughs> I said, you know, I know the last one's not real. I know. <laughs> uh, let's go to Jeanette of Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, yes, Jeanette, welcome to the J. Thomas Show. Shuli is here, and we're on Howard 101. Have, have you uh, found anything interesting that we've been discussing so far? And why not go by Janet? Yeah, Jeanette. No, no, it's Jeanette. Yes, Jeanette, go ahead. Oh, she hung up. I don't think she liked that, Shuli. Mm. See you later, <laughs> Janet. You know what? We get so few women, and I was trying now to be you so see kind. You know, let's go to Danielle. What's up, Daniel? Oh, it, here we go. <laughs> Hello. Danielle. Hi, Danny. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. Second time caller. So very excited to talk to you again, Jay. And uh, surely I'm really glad that you're there. Never talk you know, to you a lot of shows uh, have these um, mo mottos, you know, greatest show and all. The, the Jay Thomas show, easiest show to get to the host on. <laughs> right. Oh, the, wow. the, the phones are never busy, uh, no problem whatsoever. And we so, just changed that this motto. Time, it was, this time I, it was it was pretty easy, but I want to say the last time I called you, I did have trouble getting in. Really? You're, probably, was, uh, you're probably I, off I by a number. You. We were talking, no, I wasn't. Uh, it was when, uh, you guys were talking about seizures. I called in, I'm an EMT, and you were saying to put something in their mouth, and I called in saying, no, don't do that. Oh, with, um, uh, with Rich, when we were, or guess your, um, your, your, your uh, problem, affliction. your affliction, your guess, guess your, I think no, no. so, yeah. But no, guess your what? Guess your, 
Disorder? Disorder. What was it? No. Disorder. Diagnosis. Guess your di- yeah. Disorder. By the way, coming up, we're going to be playing Guess the Sound. And, um, uh, Kevin, are we going to use uh, an animal or a human for Guess the Sound? What are we going to use today? I believe a human. We're going to use a human. And a human, by the way. Hey, human Newman with you. <laughs> a human, by the way, who is uh, absolutely gorgeous, and the human will be making sounds, and you will get a chance to guess the sounds. Yeah, and if you sense. win, if you win, we take your name down, and then during the show, we use your name in a sentence. <laughs> oh wow! That's so you know so what? Surprised. Shut up, Garrett. People love that when their names are. You know what, Garrett? Can I write the sentence? Can I come up with the sentence? Yes, you can write the sentence. You see that, I don't know if they're going to love it after today. Garrett, it's ignited surely to want to write something. All right. Now, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Danielle, what did you call about? In a few moments, guess the sound or the imitation. Yes, Danielle, go ahead. I was calling. There's been lots of topic changes. I was just calling about the whole shaving thing. Go ahead. Definitely. Well, uh, uh, Danielle, we're all here. Hold on. Hold on. We should guess right now. We should go around the horn, around the room, and see whether we think she shaved or trimmed or unshaved. Come on. No, you know what? It depends what part. No. The twat. Yeah. No. Your kneecap. What's your kneecap look like? You know what? I will only. I'm the only Landing one. Strip. I'm the only one that can get. Can, hey, by the way, I'm going to say this now, and I don't want you to break this rule. I'm the only one that can say, "Let's go around the horn," and don't ever try that again. All right, okay. then let's then let's uh, do because it's not interesting. Let's go duck duck goose. <laughs> round the bases. Round. No, let's go no. around in a circle. I think it would be interesting for you guys to guess what I shave and what I don't shave. Well, I hope your asshole is on the shaved list. That's number one. Uh, well, definitely. definitely. All right, good. Do you ever wax that thing or what? No, no yeah. waxing. I, yeah, it I looks get, painful. I get, um, no, it's not that it's painful. I could deal with the pain, but I have just with my skin and stuff. I, I get, got a better um, one. Put her on hold. Paper. I got a better one. Put her on hold. You ready? Let's go around the horn. Let's go with how much does she weigh? All right. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to start off first. Go ahead. I'm going to go deuce, deuce and a half. I'm, say, I'm saying 320. All right, Garrett? Garrett. She's an EMT. She weighs like 155. No. No. When did she say she was an EMT? A long time ago, second time caller. Oh, that's right. I'll hang up and listen to your response. <laughs> um, uh, Kevin, what do you think she weighs? I'm going to go with a buck 80. Buck 80. All right, Danielle, what, Rich. Danielle what's your weight? Oh, you don't want to hear the weight? epileptic kids oh, guess? Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. He's going to have a seizure if you don't talk to him. If I don't hear from you, Rich, I'm going to throw a fit. <laughs> Go ahead, Rich. I'll go with the under 115. Wow. One points. We shouldn't, wow. Have let, we shouldn't have let him in. Danielle, how much do you weigh? I'm going to say 115 was way too low. I don't know my exact weight. I don't have a scale, and when I go to the doctors, I don't look at it. But I am between those second to last two guys. I'm, I'm between like 155 and like 165. I think. All right, all right. But I have really, I have 40 G's, just like Robin Quivers does. You have 40 I have 40 G's. All right, Danielle. On my breath. Love my talking to you. Huge. All right, see you later. See you later. I'm done with her. Done with her. Finish it. Finish. See, just That's like a guy. As soon as you finish, you're like, oh, get out. No, you get know off. what it is? It's like, you know, she's talking about shaving and all, you know. If I well, wanted to hear all that, sh- hold it a second. If I wanted to hear all that shit, I'd do Howard's material. Okay. Well, I'm still guessing landing strip. I'm trying to take this show. I want people to know that I'm different. Don't we have a midget on as our first guest? We do. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then we have that political guy from Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, we're driving right by Howard Cho. Hey. <laughs> um, one time. Um, the, the soapbox you were on just <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> you, just, you just fell right through it. Um, years ago, I, I guess, I guess when Jackie left or whatever, Howard had some some guys, you know, come in to like replace him, and and you know Rodney Lee Conover has been writing, you know, with me for twenty years, so I knew I was going to get fired. 
So I called Don up and I said, Hey, you know, I, you know, and Don, Don got me the job. We knew I was getting canned at this station before right. I got canned. So I said, look, um, why don't you see if Howard would let Rodney, you know, audition for the writer job over there, right? So Howard says, yeah. So they brought Rodney over. I don't think you were, you weren't with him then. This is when we're on terrestrial, right? Yeah, no. I he brings Rodney over and... for a week right. and he sits where Jackie sat or whatever that, you know, sends him lines or whatever like that. Right. So Rodney is really nervous and he's walking to work, you know, walking to, to the audition. And he gets to the to the building by K Rock or whatever, and there is a a person laying in the street in their own feces with vomit all over him like a he couldn't even tell the sex of this thing, right? Sour shoes. He steps over them and he has to knock on the door, ring the bell or whatever, goes upstairs. That person in the street would ha was Howard's first guest. Yeah. Yeah. Well right. that was the yeah. green room for those guests. Yeah. <laughs> Howard's first guest was that guy. Uh, let's go to um, <clears throat> Andrew of Indiana. Yes, Andrew, how are you, Andrew? Uh, doing all right. I wanted to uh, weigh in on the shaving issue. My uh, my ex my ex wife is uh, Chinese, so of course when I met her, you know, no shaving whatsoever, meaning legs, armpits, nothing. Yeah, look um, like Larry Fine down there. Now, now yeah. the Chinese uh, usually are not a ha are, they're not generally a hairy group, are they? So oh yeah, they, uh, can well, not, they can be hairy. They can be hairy. Legs and armpits, not so much, but, you know, when you get up in bush region, it's, it's pretty thick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they so, save it. She, mm -hmm. Does it look like one of those bir bird nest soups? You ever get that bird nest <laughs> soup at the little Chinese restaurant? <laughs> I don't know. Be willing but you know what? That. Before you go on, I'm going to tell you one quick Chinese story. <laughs> Woody Allen, who I was working for in New York, oh hates to be recognized. He hates to be recognized, but he loves to go to Chinatown and eat in these little Chinese restaurants. Mm -hmm. And he wears that hat and everything else, you know. And he always has, like, either a book or he's writing or whatever. Hates to be recognized. So he goes into a Chinese restaurant, and a friend of mine was in there, and everybody, you know, there was a, mostly Chinese people, two or three Americans, and they they, they, they saw it. Hey, that's Woody Allen, right? So they wait on Woody Allen. They wait on Woody, Woody Allen. <laughs> the waiter does like this. Yes, sir. What would Woody Allen like to eat today? <laughs> so he, he says, uh, whatever he says, you know. Woody, he goes to the kitchen. Woody Allen would like egg drop soup. <laughs> and it goes on for the whole. And finally he comes, he goes, Woody Allen ready for his check now? Yeah. That's my favorite Chinese, and that, you know, true. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, I, I catch a lot of crap from people, you know, because personally, I, I prefer it to be more natural. Um, I, I don't see anything weird about thinking, you know, its natural state is, is bad. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, but, but beyond that, I think we're going to have to actually change our uh, lexicon. I mean, because you think of all the terms like mm -hmm. carpet muncher or hair pie, we're going to have to change that now. Mm -hmm. It no longer means anything. Well, that's that's great. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you. We're, <laughs> we're gonna have to we're have to change the lexicon. Yeah, <laughs> let's run that by Congress. You, you know, I have that. to tell you, I can remember kissing my grandfather, and he had a little bit of stubble. You know, like you know, you kiss your old granddad. <laughs> that, that's what you call it now. You, when a girl's like shaved, but there's a day out, a day of you go. It was like kissing my granddad. That's what you call it. That's the that's new lexicon. It's That's like licking. It. It's like licking Grandpa's chin. That's the new thing. Okay. Aww. What were you doing down there? I was licking Grandpa's chin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Aww. Thank you very much. Uh, we Thanks. will um, have. Um, I like that you gross it? that guy. He has to wear Kareem Abdul-Jabbar goggles to go down on his wife, and you grossed him out. Uh, we will also talk about the burning of the Quran. The reason why I say that, CNN, first of all, they have lost in the last year, I don't even know how they have listeners, viewers, they've lost over 60% of their viewers. All of those shows, Anderson, Cooper, all of them, I mean, like, and they, nobody watches CNN, no one. They are so frightened that something bad is going to happen to them, they don't spell Quran with a K like everybody else. They spell it. Q U O A or whatever it is, right? Because they are frightened that that, that some Muslim is going to do something to them. Yeah. Have you, have you have you seen how they're spelling it? 
that, and I watched this whole one-hour special that Anderson Cooper did. Uh, called, On the burning of the Quran. Yeah, called Hello, I'm Anderson. And uh, <laughs> no, but he it, it was in the, the greatest thing about the special was they had these two New Yorkers there. One was the construction guy, and one was a sister. Her brother was a firefighter killed on 9-11. And every time these guys started, like, kind of making sense with this shit, and, like, you know, they're obviously opposed to it. Anderson, like a lawyer, you no, just jump opposed, in. Oh wait, opposed to the to the to the um, to the, the mosque, mosque, yeah, or to the burning. What were they opposed? To? They were opposed to the mosque in the first half. Then they talked about, but they were gone for the second half when they talked about the Koran burning. But mm-hmm. the the mosque thing, you know, they they had some very valid points that they were making. But they're so uptight over there. They're so oh, yeah. terrified. Unbelievable. And they keep bringing up the cartoonists over in in Denmark or wherever it was that did the. The thing of Muhammad and and how basically this Amman came back and and straight up warned us, well, kind of threatened us, saying, "Look, you know, you better hope this thing doesn't uh, fall apart because that's going to lead to some crazy people doing some crazy shit." Now I'm going to say this now: this guy who's not going to burn any Qurans uh, this weekend, a somebody met with him, some Amman met with him. His church has 50 people in it. Yeah, he's a nobody. He, he's a com- completely meaningless. He now has a worldwide following and a hatred. And I saw um, Hillary Clinton, who was so glib. She goes, look, that's the world we live in now. She goes, this guy with 50 people in a room causes a worldwide firestorm. She goes, it's just ridiculous. And, of course, he shouldn't do it, but... Meanwhile, How did he get this kind of power? Well, you know? and meanwhile, he's got a meeting set up with this imam out here from the mosque. They're going to they're put these two in the same room. Like, this guy wouldn't be allowed on the same block. Uh, the FBI has called this guy about four or five times. All these you know, Muslims are saying they're going to blow the church up and all that. Now, here's the weird thing. I don't give three shits about this guy, Terry Jones. I don't care what happens to him. I don't care. Nobody should. And I, got- I don't give a shit. I mean, if you're stupid enough... To do that, and he may cause people to get killed overseas, and, you know, they're looking for any fucking reason to, to kill Here, people. The anyway. point is, it's not even about the Quran uh, being bur- It's about re- religion is what's getting people killed and has been for, for yeah, so this, many years. So this guy is Burn them all. Burn the Quran. Burn the Bible. Burn fucking old and new. Start a huge... Uh, t- Wait a minute. I didn't notice. Wait a minute. Bonfire. You didn't say burn the... the what's the Jewish book? Burn the Torah, burn the... No, you didn't say it, oh, though. Oh, sure, burn no, it. No, you didn't say it. Burn it. You go didn't to say it. I told a rabbi to go fuck his mother in the ass. You think, I, you think I'm going to put my hand up and go, wait? You know, on that note, I think we should take a break. The Jake <laughs> Thomas Show. You're doing it wrong. On Howard 101. Oh. Um, midget basketball players on the way from the New York Towers basketball team. Uh, uh, Garrett, yeah, yeah, he doesn't like when you use that uh, that word. Oh boy, what do you mean? We got an email saying he considers the M word like the N word. Well, why don't we call him the N word then? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just why don't we just get it out of the way here? You know, you know. <laughs> How about we just call him Stretch, big okay. guy? All right, hold on. We'll do whatever he wants. How tall is he? He is three foot three. We'll call him three three. How about that? Larry Bird. 33 in the house. He is a member of the Dwarf Athletic Association. And How's Dwarf better? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I would be more insulted. But he's the manager of the New York... Hold on a minute. We we have named that sound. We need to... Um, we need to go around the... Well, you know the names already, guys. You already know it. Doesn't, doesn't. Let's go to Pete of... Uh, of Chicago, Pete. Before you ask your question, what do you think the um, the the dwarf uh, basketball team calls themselves? They are the New York what? Uh, New York midgets. 
No, they don't. <laughs> and they're not. And let me just say now. <laughs> yeah. Let me just say now. No. They're, they're not the New York N words either. No, they're not. They're neither one. Or they're, they're also not the New York M N words either. You know. <laughs> well, that's got to be the worst. Combo or right there. or they are they are not the New York N M words either. So I toured, any combination of those words is not going to work. I can tell you, I, I toured with Beetlejuice, and the M N word was thrown around a few times yeah, from the. Yeah, doing that. Yeah. Uh, Pete, you sound like you're calling from. Uh, you're on the move. You're trucking. Is that what you're doing? Trucking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the road. What do you got in the back? I always like to. What's what are you hauling? What are you hauling that is going to make the lives of Americans better? What are you hauling? Styrofoam cups. Styrofoam cups. So you're actually hauling something that will kill us in the future. Thank you so much, Pete. Uh, you're, you're hauling something that if we bury it for 20,000 years and you dig it up, you can still put a refreshing cocktail in it, and it's the same. What's yeah, your, that's what uh, I like. What's your yeah. handle over there on the uh, on the CB? Snow Pro. S snow, snow Pro? Yeah, I used to be a professional snowmobile racer. Ooh. You did? Wow. Yeah. Cool. You did you, you ever crash? A truck full of styrofoam cups? That's why I'm a truck driver. Mm. I had two back surgeries. Garrett thinks he can lift a truckload of styrofoam cups. That's a great question. You know what else Garrett, yeah. Garrett said is there is no I in styrofoam. Star what do you mean? There's no I in styrofoam. No, wait a minute. Hold it a second. When you hit a bump, does the back of the truck just kind of go way up in the air because there's no weight in the back of the truck? Absolutely. It's a whole load only like 6,000 pounds and it's stuff. The trailer's oh. stuff. Wow. And it's it's something no one ever steals too. I mean no one ever never holds you at gunpoint and steals all your cups. Hey right? Vinny, we got six thousand pounds of styrofoam cups we gotta move. I gotta lock it up. I gotta lock it up, you know. Yeah. You know what's funny is like a kilo of cocaine would weigh more than your entire, you know, load. Yeah. You can't even smuggle drugs. He weighs more than the load he's on. All right, Pete, we have uh, squeezed every bit of humor out of that uh, styrofoam bit we can. Uh, what did you call about, uh, Pete? Uh, well, that's what I was thinking. You know how everyone's mad about, you know, uh, you know how they're, whatever, the, uh, the Muslims or whatever, they're going to get upset about the Bernie. Yes. Well, I think, that's, I think that's a great thing because we should do things to insult them because we can never identify who's good or bad. They don't, you know... They don't, uh, you know, wear uniforms or they don't have faces or stuff like that. So excuse me, excuse, excuse me, Pete. They wear very definite uniforms. The women wear the the thing, the hood. The guys wear the the hood. I mean, what are you kidding? You can spot them in a minute. Well, yeah, but you can't determine which one, uh, you know, is um, you know against America or you know who's a soldier for the Taliban or whatever. You know, yeah. it brings them out of their caves and it gets them pissed off. And then, you know, the enemy, you know, reveals himself, and then we can take care of them. Well, that's why you go with my game plan. Whenever you're around one of them, you hate America, too. That, that way. <laughs> that's what you do? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You're in the bus. You're with one of these women. You can only see their eyes, and you go like this. You know, I hate America, too. Yeah. You know, good to have you with us. Thanks. Yeah. Down with the All Zionist right. monster. That is okay, so Pete, <laughs> so Pete, uh, as we, uh, let me get a pen here. You are, it's one vote for burn the Quran. Is that your vote? Burn the Quran? Yep. yep. All right. Anything, th thank you, Pete. Anything to make a man. All anything right. Anything to make you. a man. Let's go to. Spoken like a man hauling styrofoam cups. <laughs> Let's go to Corey of Winnipeg. Hello, Corey. Uh, the Jay Thomas Show with Shirley. Stay where you are. Name that sound and dwarf basketball players on the way. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, uh, wow. You weren't joking when you said it's easy to get through. I mean, first time trying to call, first time getting through. But, uh, anyways, you were saying. Easy. Hold it a second. <laughs> Easiest show in America to get on. I know it is. Nice change. It's a nice change. Well, absolutely. and if you can't get through on the line for some reason, we'll give you our cell phone number. Uh, absolutely. You I'm going to just call us directly. You know what? I'm going to give you not just my cell phone, my home number. Right. And when you call, leave a message with my wife. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay. You know these people that try and go like, oh, they need a bodyguard or they have a, a, a the the windows are, are tented. Not me. I keep the windows down, and as when I stop at a stop sign, someone looks at me and go, "Hi, Jay Thomas, how are you?" I want everyone to know who I am, where I'm going, and what I'm doing at all times. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Well, uh, I have a term about going down at a girl that's a little little bit easier to, easier to stomach than licking the chin of your grandpa. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I ran this one by one of my friends, but I never had to, had an opportunity to use it yet in a, in a in a real life situation. But chewing whole. Uh, oh, thank you so much. You know what, Cor- hey, hey, Garrett, don't have him call a house, okay? That's bad. Thank you, I'm a Cor- trucker. <laughs> I know you are. I can imagine. <laughs> no, shit. Honey, what, what is it, sweetheart? Chewing hole is on the, on the phone for you. I can't chewing wait for hole. you to come home so I can chew your hole. Hello? Hello? Let's go to Ryan of Ohio. Ryan, are you ready to guess the human noises? Are you ready, Ryan of Ohio? Can I just say real quick before we get to Ryan that uh, yeah. Gary in Vegas on themiserablemen.com just came up with a great idea. We we burn the Quran with styrofoam cups. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Hello, Ryan of Ohio. How are you? Oh, oh my God. God. All the phones are bad today, huh? Everybody's What's calling your mind, Ryan. You know what? Put him, Put him on hold. Put him on hold. Ryan, you got to call back. It won't be hard to get back in. Put him on hold. Uh, Ryan, go uh, to Verizon. Get a new phone. Call us back. Um... Let's go to Alonzo, Texas. We're we're looking now for Alonzo. <clears throat> Alonzo, uh, are you for the burning of the Quran or against it? I'm not sure he said. Let them burn it. Okay, let's. <laughs> let them burn. Let them burn everything. Let them burn it. Yeah. They burn our stuff. Oh wait a minute! I, let me let me add let me add all religious yeah, literature. That, I want to clarify my point was not just yeah. to burn the Quran, but to burn all mm-hmm. religious books that yeah. lead to people okay. doing stupid shit. Okay, hold on. For the Quran, we have one. Uh, for all religious literature, we have one. The Watchtower, all that shit. I'm gonna. You know what? After this, I'm gonna send this over to CNN, and they can use this as a poll. <laughs> Put it in Anderson's slot. Yeah. Uh, Alonzo of Texas, are you ready to name uh, the sound that this human is making? Yeah. Now you know what you know what, Kevin. I don't know. <laughs> I don't give a list of the sounds, so I don't know what she's what what she's doing. <laughs> so so, Kevin, uh, tell us how you're going to do it. So that well, actually, uh, Ga- Garrett's running this one. Garrett's got the computer in front of him. All right, Garrett, how are we running this one? Uh just hit play, and then everyone guesses. I guess. Super producer. I mean, I know what the I know what the answers are. I know, I know. Do you know what the answers are, Shuli? No. Okay. Do you know, Kevin? Do you know the answers? Uh, not no. exactly, but I'll be able to figure them out because I remember, you know, going through the clip. Okay. So this woman, by the way, is a is the Chinese Miss Universe contestant. Oh. And oh. for some reason, they asked them to imitate. Um, what animals? Was, they had a list of sound effects, it's and they just went effects. through it and like, all right, do this one. Now do this one. Now do this one. Well, what reason was this? What, we, what? we are looking for new foley artist. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is the reason for it? Does anybody say why they needed these sounds from the Miss Universe? No idea. None. All right. Well, um, it's just to it, make a viral video. But you know what? It beats the. Uh, uh, how would you change the world? If well, you it had does. the chance. Yeah. You know, let's let, you know do a sound of a fucking cricket. Let's go in a bikini. Do it. All right. The first one. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's listen uh, to the first. Uh, you, can you run it? Can you start and stop it a couple yes, of times? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let. Mm. All right. Turn it up. All right. Turn it up. Let's try it again. Here one more go. time. Here we go. One second. Here we go. One more time. Ow. Wow. <laughs> Ow. I have a guess. Uh, Ryan, what do you think that is? What what animal is that? It's uh, Alonzo. Oh, I think Alonzo. she's I think she's trying to do a wolf. See, I, I was thinking She's that. doing hold on a second. What you can't get you, she's do, is he, she doing a wolf? Ow. I was gonna say retarded cow. <laughs> <laughs> is that a wolf cow? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Alonzo. Thank you, though. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh wait a second. Kind of wolf sounds like that. Can you turn it up any louder than that? Make it any louder? Uh, a little bit. It sounds it sound like you're only when I'm having sex. All right. You know what, Alonzo? We don't need the commentary. That's two guesses, Alonzo. Yeah, you're, you're done. Get out of here. Get out of here. Dare you. Uh, let's go to... Oh, this is my favorite caller. I've been doing this for a couple of years now. This is my favorite caller. Let's go to Bull of Oklahoma on line two. What's <laughs> shaking? Is this Bull? Yeah, it's Bull. 
God damn it. Now, do you look like a bull? Do you act like a bull? What is the, what is the, uh, are you bullish? Do this you isn't the bully? Same, this yeah. isn't the same bull from over the top with Sylvester Stallone, is it? I don't know, but that is a hell of a name to go through life with. How did you get the name Bull? It's from the last name, and go ahead, get it all out. Is it Bull Wanker? <laughs> What's your last name? Bull Bullworth. <laughs> Hold on, put him on hold. No, no, uh, keep him there. Let's go around the horn. What do you think his last name is? Let's go around the horn. Let's go with uh, Rich the Fit. Uh, Rich, yes. what do you think Bull's last name is that Shit. got him... <laughs> Shit! Is <his> last name. <laughs> I just, yeah. oh, I you know what? I scratch you were the, that off my you list. were the funniest fucking epileptic I've ever met. <laughs> epileptic. All right. We've met them all, kid. We, we, you know, uh, he's an eclectic epileptic. Uh, let's go to Kevin. Kevin, uh, what's the last name? I'm going to go with Bullworth, the uh, the Warren Beatty movie. Bullworth. All right, Bullworth. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, Shuler. What do you think, Shuler? Greenberg. <laughs> Greenberg. Uh, let's go to Garrett Andrews. Garrett. Bull Shannon. Bull Shannon? Bull Shannon. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, wait a minute. Nice. Um, wait a minute. Hold it a second. Hold it. Bull. Is bullshit taken? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. You know what? I have to tell you, as, as, as funny and intelligent as I am, I do not have a guess. <laughs> Shut up, Garrett. I am funny. I am intelligent. You little prick. I'm not dumb, not like everybody says. <laughs> That's right. I'm smart. I'm smart. Yeah. I'm smart. <laughs> okay, Bull, what's your last name? Can I play? No, what's your last name? Yeah, what's Bull, your last name? Bull Dyke, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Bull Dyke. All right, uh, Bull Dyke. Before now, what did you? Uh, yeah, you're gonna give us a name for the for the dwarf team, but also you're gonna play name the name the uh, Miss Universe sound. Go ahead, uh, give me the name for the team first. Uh, uh, Nugents or Miggers or wow. no, 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 God, wow, no, you can't. You're Bull. You know what, no. Bull? You're done. You're done. Okay, you know. You're but done. he was wrong, Jay, just to clarify. He was. Oh, wrong. okay. All right. Awful. I got to scratch those off my list, too. Then. I'm Now I'm afraid. <laughs> now I'm afraid. Let's go to Adam of Ohio. Hello, Adam. It's Jay Thomas. How are you? What's going on, guys? All right, Adam, before you say a word, are you yes, from sir. the state of Ohio? Yes, sir. Okay. You are for burning the Quran. Most definitely, sir. Oh, I knew that. Thank you. There we put well, that. Have you been to too. Ohio? There's not much to do there. No, so. there is. In fact, that would be a big <laughs> night. All right, let's play with Adam of, of Ohio, who believes in burning the Quran. Let's go to uh, name that sound. Can let's I just can we before we do this? Can I just ask sure. why he's for burning the Quran? He's um, from Ohio. That's why. He's exactly. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. why am I for it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, to be honest with you guys, it, 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 that whole thing just scares the hell out of me. Why not? You know what I mean? <clears throat> what do you mean? Well, if it scares you, why, why, right. listen, this is the absolute truth. We, right. there was a hornet's nest, and it's called the Middle East, and, you know, Shuley's from Israel, so he knows. Why do you think we got the fuck out of there? <clears throat> That's exactly right. <laughs> so, 20 guys come over, and they do this horrible thing, they blow up the World Trade Center, and so we should have right. gone, and we should have gone to... Pakistan, okay? How about Saudi Arabia? And we should have arrested people in Saudi Arabia who financed it. And we should have gone, and when they said, oh, you know, uh, we think Osama bin Laden is in these mountains, we should have taken our atomic weapons, and we should right. have blown up the mountains and killed him and everybody else. He's in Pakistan, and the Pakistanis know exactly where he is, right? Instead... We went to the fucking hornet's nest with a big stick, and we beat the piss out of the hornet's nest, and now we're fucked. I still don't know why we can't find this son of a bitch and kill him, and I'll tell you why. Because Pakistan is our ally. That's where Osama bin Laden is. That's who knows where he is, and we know that. And if you're a Republican or a Democrat, they know it. Well, I absolutely, and, 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 I believe that as 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 easy it is to get into this show. That's how much I believe. It. Okay. And the other right, factor, well, the other factor why they don't go yeah. into Pakistan and bust heads is the fact that they have nuclear armament there. They got oh, nukes. Oh, they, we never attack anybody that can really do anything to us. Well, that's okay. a, you know, no, no. 
That's like me well, in a fist fight. You know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can so I, Adam, I'll yeah, explain it more. a little bit better. Sure. And when I sure. when I say scare the hell out of me, I understand what you're saying, and I and I and I agree with you in some source. Mm-hmm. But their their whole their whole backbone of their religion, okay, is what what I'm saying scares the hell out of me. It's not the people that scare the hell out of me. It's it scares religion. me. Kill it with fire. You know, to be <laughs> honest. I don't know much about honest. their religion. I really don't know much about right. it and all that. And and I don't, you know, you can find all kind of shit in the Bible. One day yeah. in a in a we were my, we, you know, we're not big Bible thumpers, but there was a Bible in a in a hotel room, and my kids were like, Damn I want to say five and three, right? So one of them gets the Bible out of the book and says something like, "What's this?" Like that. Why is there a book in the hotel? So I said, "Well, you know, they put the Bible, and the Bible is the." You know, the story of God and, and, and people, you know, 2000 years ago. I just started reading the first few pages. It was so violent that my wife said, Jesus, you know, don't read them all of that. And I said, it's, it, it was difficult not to find violent shit in the, in the Bible. So there is violence and there's stupidity and, and you could go through all of them. I don't know a thing about the Quran. I am at the faintest idea what's, What's in the Quran? I don't know. I have no yeah. idea. Well, I, I mean, it's it's supposedly, you know, uh, a very peaceful religion, yet it can also be interpreted to make sure that everyone who's not part of this religion is floating face down in the ocean. Is so, that in there? I have somewhere? a mother-in-law like that, by the way. <laughs> you do? <laughs> that's yeah, right. She's well, Lutheran, you know what I mean? So. That's right, yeah. Now, it's time to play Name That Sound. Are you ready, Adam? Yes, sir. All right. And by the way, if you name the sound correctly, uh, your name will be used in a sentence, your full name, first and last name. Uh, okay, uh, this is a Miss Universe from China. And now, now, Garrett, is she imitating um, an animal of some sort? Is that it? Uh, uh, she want me to give out a clue? Yes, Garrett, obviously I do. I uh, just uh, I don't want to ruin anything. Yes, what do you mean ruin an anything? What's that? It is an animal. That's Boy, I've got to tell you something. It's a good clue. You are becoming troublesome. I can just tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you used to know how I'm thinking. There's something going on with you right now. Okay? And then the laughing at me when I'm being serious <laughs> pisses me off even. And you too. I don't like the other laughing either. Yeah, Kevin. I'm sorry, man. Damn. And you, and you know what? You shut the fuck up too, Adam the listener. I'm in the middle of, of discipline. Burn your ass like a car. That's right. You know who I'm starting to like? The epileptic. <laughs> He doesn't say much. And that's he sure doesn't. And you know what I hate, though? When you go out with him, he gets some saliva and shit on you when he's in that fit mode. Yeah. That's the only bad thing. Rich the uh, fit. I like the new name. All right. Here we go. Let's hear the sound. All right. Ow. Oh. All right. Adam, what do you think that is? Well, Jay, I'm, you know, I apologize when I say this. I know you say it's an animal, but I'm going to have to go with Wendy the Retard. Wendy the Retard. Sorry, sir. I'm have to go. Why waste? Why oh, waste the guess? Come on. Why waste the guess like that? Why do that? I don't, I, That's a it, Chinese it Miss Universe. Okay, making the sound. He's wasted his. He's wasted his guess. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Depressing. Depressing. I, uh, Let's go. To, yeah. I was gonna say it sounds like she stubbed her toe on the way up to the mic <laughs> to do the animal impression. <laughs> Now, is it an animal that is recognizable, Garrett? I mean, is it like a Not everyday? When she does it. Is it an everyday animal? If you asked a kid to name an animal at the zoo, it would be like top three. Let me hear it one more time. Top three animal. Hold on, hold on. Let me hear it. One more time. Okay, Mike of Montreal. Uh, we have to go to break, and then we have our dwarf basketball player coming. Do I, uh, Mike, what um, what is that sound? possible uh, a cat getting anal. A cat getting <laughs> anal. Garrett, is it a cat getting anal? Ow. No, I don't think you're an idiot. You're a compl- get rid of him. Get rid of him. Let's go to Julio. Julio of Chicago. Hello, Julio. It's Jay Thomas. How are you? Julio. Good morning, gentlemen. How you doing? Really good. Play the sound one more time, Garrett, please. Here we go. Name that sound. Ow. All right. That's I a Chinese. Julio. Yeah. What is uh, that, Julio? What is that sound? Maybe it's a hippo? I don't know. A hippopotamus. Hippo. Yeah, maybe. Garrett. Hippo? Ow. No, it is not a hippo. Okay. And by the way, Julio, are you for or against burning the Quran? 
You know, I am for burning the Koran. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The one thing I've got to say is, what has happened to our society mm -hmm. that we are kowtowing to a bunch of religious zealots mm -hmm. that have no fear in mm -hmm. killing our soldiers, beheading them on camera, and mm -hmm. we're worried about burning a fucking book? Well, I don't. I, you know what? To, to, you know, I, I I know they're doing that overseas. I don't think they're doing that in Gainesville. That's the problem. See, the You're Muslims, right. the Muslims here in the United States haven't really beheaded anybody, and and we've caught a couple of them. They're pretty fucking stupid. The ones that we've been catching, you know, yeah, the shoe yeah. bomber. How about the guy that lit his balls on fire? He's my favorite terrorist. The guy that lit his underwear on fire and burn the shit out of his taint. That's I, all he did. I still think yeah. Al-Qaeda was pranking his ass. They punked him. <laughs> yeah, what about the guy in New York uh, that tried to set off that uh, that van? I mean, what a oh. fucking clue. How many surveillance cameras are there around there? Oh, God, 150 if there's two. The other one is, and this is not a joke, half of the bombers overseas die because they hug each other before they go out and they blow it they forget and blow each other up let's because, just bump you know the <laughs> hugging is like a part of the deal here's the good thing about them if they keep killing you know they're killing the best and the brightest i mean let them you know we ought to let them go into a little room and blow each other up if that's what they well, want to do i mean if you think you know? about it the, yeah. the best and the brightest are the ones who aren't blowing themselves up in that's my opinion. true that's true you know it's like dealing what with you say to the easy. head guy yeah hey, why don't you go first why don't you go first and then we'll yeah. see how it goes for you i'll wait you know? 15 minutes and uh, then i will go all right thank you so much uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Boy, I thought we were going to get this sound. Uh, Doug of New Jersey, uh, guess the sound, please. Elephant? What is it? <laughs> Try it again. Maybe, a, maybe oh. an elephant? I don't know. All right, is that an Ow. elephant? Garrett, is that an elephant? No. How is that an elephant? Can I give you a couple guesses? You know guesses? what, Garrett? You said it was a top three animal at the zoo. Yeah, that's why I guess, you know. Well, of course, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't know what's the matter with this, Garrett. Well, you also got to think, why would those people be asking her to imitate an elephant noise? I mean, well, what do you target. mean? Exactly. Thank you, it's, it's top three, he said. I, uh, elephant. Okay. Ow, woo. That's what I have a you couple. Know, by the way, I'm going to be in a plane later, and I'm going to be trying to sleep, and in my head, I'm going to hear, ow. <laughs> the only thing that would make that sound better is ow. right after. <laughs> Werewolves in London. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go to Dave in the Pocono Mountains of uh, New, going today, guys? New York State. Dave, did you have any trouble uh, getting through at um, 888 Stern 101? I got to tell you, it took a long time to get through, Jay. So you must really? You know what, Dave? Oh. Let me apologize. It'll never happen again. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's okay. okay. It'll never, you'll never have to dial more than one time ever again. All right, Garrett, make sure the phones are fixed. Will All do. Right. Make sure Dave had a problem exactly getting through. Back. Go ahead, Dave. The guess Jay, that sound. The Jay guess Thomas the Show, where every line is the hotline. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh -huh. I'm gonna, I would go with, uh, like, lion or big cat episode. Garrett, what is it? Whoa. Oh, wonderful. Let's listen to the Chinese lady uh, making the noise of a Makes line. sense. She's doing an impression of something they eat. All right, go, go ahead. Here we go. Ow. Ow, oh, there you go. That's it's actually line. a lion that just stubbed its toe. I guess. Well, go. by the way, that's not the only sound she makes. We have another sound coming up in a few moments. It's a hippo Dave. giving anal to a cat. Dave, what's your last name? Dave, what's your uh, last name? My last name is Stianchi. Spell it, please. S T S I A N S I A N. No, no. S T I S T I A N A N Z H Z H C H E E L. Yeah. Stianchi? No. There you go. You got it, Jay. Dave Stianchi. You forgot the uh, L. There you go. And we are going we're going to oh, use, use your name in a sentence today. A, Dave I'm Stianchi. Okay. So, surely, do we have the sentence yet, or should we we'll just wait a few minutes? Dave can call his friends. <laughs> yeah. Call his friends and family. Oh, yeah. right. Dave, call I'm, your friends I'm, and family. I'm, Dave Stianchi. I'm frightened, yeah. I'm frightened to hear this one, Jay. And you are gonna, you are the the listener of the. I don't know if it's of the day, but in a few minutes, uh, your name will be used. It could come in any moment, during sure. any subject. Dave Stianchi's name uh, will be. Now, is that your real name, or you? Or is this like somebody else that you know? You're the real. Well, Jay, I'll, tell, 
I'll tell you what, that, that is my real name, and I'm right. actually, I live in the Poconos, so I have a business in the Poconos, too, so. Oh, and people in the Poconos know the Stianchi name. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, this is even more fun. I hope it's very yeah, sexual yeah. and very embarrassing. All right, stay where you are, Dave. Stay where you are. Another sound coming, uh, guys, from the uh, the Dwarf basketball team. And we also have a, a political guest, uh, Basil Marceau, uh, who was running for governor of Tennessee. I believe he lost. We will talk to him about the Quran uh, burning, which I don't think is going to happen. But we'll keep asking you, keep talking about all of this stuff. Remember, this is the Jay Thomas Show, home of Rich the Fit. Funny. Idiots, freaks, and weirdos. We call it the J. Thomas Show. Right. Howard 101. Uh, are you listening? You're listening to the J. Thomas Show. <laughs> I'm not. Howard 101. Wow. In the headlines, Sean Penn says, uh... Why Clef Jean should not be the president of Haiti, surely? Um, it should be Sean. I don't know who it should be, but did I send you that um, that link uh, that we can play later on, Garrett, or the, the story I don't about? So. Um, okay, well, look look for that. Sean uh, Penn uh, says that Why Clef Jean should not be the president of Haiti. We will continue with name that sound. That the Chinese or the or the words or whatever that the Chinese uh, Miss Universe is doing, and we'll have the very controversial um, Basil Marceau on who ran for the um, um, BasilMarceau.com. That's right. He ran governor for the governor of Tennessee. Of Tennessee. Right. Uh, let's go now to Clinton Brown. Clinton, uh, the New York Towers Basketball dot com, and the New York Towers are a dwarf basketball team that will compete in the Dwarf Athletic Association America's National Games, and you do charity tournaments all over the uh, the the great uh, well New York, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, Pennsylvania area. Uh, welcome to the show, Clinton. How are you? Good morning, man. What's going on, bud? Thanks for having me on. I'm good. We're asking everybody today, uh, anybody that calls or one of our guests, um, do you believe, uh, and then we can go on with the interview, do you believe the Quran should be burned, the Quran should not be burned, or perhaps all religious literature should be burned? Uh, no, I believe uh, nothing like that should be burned. It's, no, sac okay. you're, it's sacred. So. You're against burning the Quran. All yep. right. Can I tell you the first person that's against it? Who? Oh. Mm -hmm. Three others. <laughs> that well, we don't. You know, this is, this is not the greatest survey ever taken. <laughs> Three are for burning it. You are against it, and one person is for burning everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that would be All me. Right? Mm -hmm. That would be that would be Shuley, and he works here. That's how weak this show is. Uh, now listen. Uh, we said the word uh, midget and, and stuff, and right. let me apologize to you. Um, it is very difficult for all of us uh, to know what words, you know, I called Shuley a stupid Jew once, and <laughs> it caused such a firestorm of activity. With other we don't know stupid what Jews, not with me. I was <laughs> well, what? We don't know what to call people. So um, the word dwarf is, is less offensive than midget. Why is midget? Uh, offensive. So I'll give you the, the quick on that. The word midget is historically been a negative, uh, has a negative connotation because mm -hmm. it was derived during the circus era when little people were, were exploited. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I shouldn't even say exploited because they did the jobs that they had to do to survive, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think as part of our advocacy push just lately, um, we've been moving away from that word because people use midget and they say, hey, midget, look at the midget. You know, like I grew up with that. So it's, it's a real sore point. So I think we're just trying to move away from that and use the word little person or dwarf. Now, you are three foot three, and uh, were you b born of, of little people or, or your parents? Now, no. now here's another. Here's an, I almost said, are, are they normal um, size? I almost said the word normal. Right. You oh, see, yeah. this, is, oh, this, is, this is a very difficult yeah. interview for me. Very difficult. Very no, difficult. don't worry about it, man. I mean, I uh, mean, every time I turn around, I'm in a goddamn, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a corner someplace, and I'm trying everything I can to, <laughs> to get out of the corner. No, absolutely not. It's totally cool. I mean, my parents are average size. My dad's six foot. My mom's five five. So they didn't know uh, going into the game that I was going to be little. They, I, you know, they told her at the hospital when I was born, and uh, 
you know, they said, you know, we're going to take this little guy home and, and treat him like he was average size. And, you know, I had some surgeries when I was a kid, but they always taught me to uh, be positive and, and uh, you know, be happy, man. And you know, I'm a businessman in New York, and I made my way through college and basically living life regular. And um, that's that's kind of my approach. So when you're driving around or you're, you know, you're watching TV or you're listening to the radio, the word midget is thrown around pretty much. Oh, dude, right. all the time. So, I mean, it's it's not like, yeah. I'm, you know, I hear it and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, but you got to start somewhere, right? So would you, you know, what's funny? I, I should have asked you that. Do you ever want to burn a tall person? <laughs> would you like it? Let's just say this. You you and your team, the New York Towers, yeah. you have a tall person burning where you burn people that are tall. Well, we have or how a- about if you burn people who say the word midget? <laughs> hmm? No, I mean, it would be cool in the beginning, but it really wouldn't go over too long. <laughs> it would be really cool to start it. Then you, okay. After the so first I was gonna, two, you're like, yeah. eh. You know what? I was going to start a new survey, so I had you down as a yes and then as a no, so I'll put that as a maybe. It'd be good. Yeah, it might not help the cause, but... Yeah. Now, where are you guys? Uh, uh, where are you guys playing? Uh, you have a game this weekend. Where does the um, uh, the Dwarf Athletic Association, uh, the New York Towers, okay. uh, Dwarf basketball team play? So I'll tell you right now. What we're doing is we're setting up faculty games against schools, and we're setting up corporate games. But on October third, we're playing a semi-pro team from Long Island called the New York Wizards in um, in Albertson, Long Island. All the information's on our website. Um, so we're playing two halves, fifteen minute halves, and there's two rules in, uh, in place for this game because yeah, you know, these guys are six eight, six ten. They're regular size. Wait a minute! You were playing a regular team of six foot eight, six foot seven inch guys. Yeah, man. And you're using a ten foot hoop. Ten foot hoop, baby. Now, now, if I was a gambling man, what would the what's the over under on that game? The over yeah. under is, is pretty ridiculous, but <laughs> idiot. Listen, if the under is definitely what four four. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who, now did you? Say... Who was the tallest guy on your team? Dude, we got a beast that stands like four seven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who's that? Spud Webb, your center. <laughs> Dude, Spud now... Webb couldn't make the team, man. Yeah. Now, you, what is the what are the rules? You no have black to be, guys allowed on the team. Why wouldn't he be on? You oh, have got, to be. We got three of them, man. You oh, got, right. Now, uh, when you say three of them, what are you talking about? Black guys. I, we got three African American players. Oh, I see. Thank you. I want to make sure of that. So we're going to be politically correct across yes, the we board. Are, are across this board. Now, did are. you say real quick? Did you say Albertson, Long Island? Albertson, Long Island. I have a friend who lives out there, Dave Stangy. He's a big homo. You know him? No. Stianchi. Dave Stianchi. He lives. What town do you live in? Albertson, Long Island is where this place. He has sucked off everybody in Albertson, Long Island. Dave Stianchi, and oh, he owns you're some. Dave. He owns some sort of a business in the <laughs> in the Poconos. I'm sorry. Okay, right. so that that's when you win the contest here. That's the kind of treatment. We you use get. your name in the sense. He By the way, owns a funeral home in the Poconos. I swear to God, <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Okay. Hi. Hey, Dave, how's business? It's dead around here. Um, okay. The New York Towers Basketball dot com. So how do you play a, a game against uh, you know these these taller guys? Like, yeah, the is Wizards. there anything different that that goes on in this game? Every rebound has to hit the ground once. <laughs> No wait, no wait a second. So it's like so volleyball. Slash. The ball, the ball, the six foot seven inch guy goes up yep. from the three point line. Yep. It it misses. It goes off the rim, and what are, what does his team do as the rebound is coming down? They have to wait for it to bounce. Dude, they got, they got to wait for it to bounce, and it gives them the opportunity to play play the game differently. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. they're not they're not going to get the rebound in every game they play against uh, average size people. So. Um, it, it changes it up, and every one of their passes has to be a bounce pass, so they can't throw it over ahead. Oh, every oh. pass has to be a bounce pass. Yeah. So think now, about now, 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 hold on a you second. You should throw in another rule: no high fives during the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a second. Can you run between their legs? Of course. We can. <laughs> okay. Can they play Benny Hill music over the PA now, while now, that's going on? Now, now, look. The, the, there's traveling. Uh, there's the three second rule, you know, um, you know, there's, there's a foul. Is there anything for being, for a human being smushed, for a dwarf being smushed no, by a giant? The These guys have size like 14, 16 <laughs> feet. He could step upon the, how tall is your point guard? Our point guard is 4'4". Four, four. 
Yeah. He could step on the point guard and smush him. <laughs> We're hoping nobody, we don't lose anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean, if these guys get going, I mean, yeah. they could knock the shit out of you, and there could be some injuries. I'm no watching. Kidding. I'm watching a clip of them playing on YouTube. Yeah. These these fuckers are badass, <laughs> they would man. Beat me. They would beat a lot of teams. <laughs> they Bro. they are good. So when you when you, like like uh, holy uh, shit, are there any three point shots that the towers are able to make? Oh, dude, we got we got pretty sick players. I mean, just as I said, check out the YouTube videos. We have we have two kids that grew up in the streets of New York playing in Rucker Park with guys that are on Seeing Hall. They're on they're they're phenomenal world athletes, and they've been playing with them since they were ten years old. And I, they got game, man. I'm telling you, they're, they're pretty sick. Now it says here the towers. Um, uh, about seven years ago, you were at the national games. Is this for for little people for dwarfs? Every every summer, uh, little people have a convention, and mm -hmm. at that convention, there's an athletic tournament where they play softball, basketball, um, mm -hmm. soccer, track and field. You know, they compete against each other because other than that, they can't they can't compete against advertised people. They ever play but, volleyball on a ping pong table? No, but they do play volleyball. <laughs> they do. All right. yeah. Clinton Brown, by the way, is here with us, and and uh, uh, Clinton is the general manager of the New York Towers basketball team. Go to NewYorkTowers dot com, and you're also looking for corporate sponsors, and you're playing these guys, the Wizards. I apologize again. What is the venue uh, this in Long Island? We were so uh, upset about Dave Stianchi's, uh sexual <laughs> proclivities. I, I, w I, let me write it down. What's the name of the place? The venue is the Abilities Center. Abilities. Abilities. Mm -hmm. On uh, Searing Town Road in IU Willits. In in what in what town? In in Albertson. Albertson, Long Island. Okay. On October third at one o'clock. I mean, mm -hmm. it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be a first of its kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just won the national tournament this past summer. We mm -hmm. beat Matt Roloff and the little people. Uh, and um, yeah, we you know we hammered him, man. We we were up nineteen nine at halftime. They didn't know what to do. And you know, you check out our YouTube clips. These guys are. Uh, Nobody compete against. Can compete so if against. you know what, here's here's you know, of course, radio stations have done this forever. So if if Garrett is, what are you, six two or three, Garrett? That's yeah. all of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Shuli and I, we're both about what are we like five seven, five eight? Shuli, something like that. Both of us, right? Yeah. You know? On a good day, I'm five seven. Kevin, how tall are you, Kevin? I'm five nine. Okay. Uh, and then um, uh, Rich, how tall are you? Same, same thing. Five nine. Five nine. So if the five of us. Along with our the weatherman, perhaps you got to bring uh, Christine, you got to bring Christina and Madison now. Yeah, we'll bring them all. If we came and played you, the odds of us we're not you know great basketball players we are just like regular weekend guys. The odds are that you guys could beat a team, of like like the one I, like our our team. You guys could beat us. I mean, we might. I think we should. Uh, why don't we do it, man? Hops. Hey, at halftime we're mm -hmm. doing hopscotch on a checkerboard. <laughs> Whatever you want, brother. All right. Whatever you know, you surely want. with the jokes, you're going to get your ass kicked. Um, oh, it might be some, you know, I come in at <laughs> Wait Christmas. Wait till he dunks on me. That would be the worst thing ever. I come in at Christmas Dr. time. Shot. Balls you are know, in my face. Uh, maybe we could set something up for the Christmas holiday, uh, Garrett. Okay. Could be interesting. Uh, we'd have to find a, a... I tell you where I'd love for us to play. You know this Muslim that's center Florida. that's no this Muslim center that's <laughs> opening two blocks from where the World Trade Centers came down. Yeah, uh, we should play there as a kind of a you know inner inner faith. You know, <laughs> right? Be like, well, you guys wanted it here. Yeah, this is what you know, you're gonna get. You know, we should be the first renters of the uh, of the Muslim Community rec center. center yeah. You know, and go, hey, could you stop with the fucking praying, please? Because we, you know, we need to play there. <laughs> well, look, Clinton, thank you very much. Uh, Clinton is the general manager. You're not a play. Are you a manager player, or you're just the are you the coach of the of the towers also? No, I'm just the uh, manager. We have uh, one of the one of the guys, one of the players' brothers is actually the coach. Okay. What big free agent are you going to sign in the off season? Uh, He's dude, not that big, Gary. No, no, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> now you have um, uh, some of your players are um, Jamani Swanson. Yep. Justin Tompkins. They're trying to start a national little NBA, a league that would provide halftime shows at the NBA. You have Blaze Trey Foster, who is uh four foot six, one of your forwards. Now yep. here's the thing. Um when you play these schools and if you tried to play at halftime of the NBA, 
would that not really open up more derisive cat calls and everything, uh, even though you don't want to be called midgets or whatever? Doesn't that kind of like focus on look where these little people and you know we're running around? Almost makes it like a sideshow type of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It, it, I mean, in the beginning, people are going to say, you know, this is this is stupid. But uh, listen, after a couple of seconds of seeing us play, I yeah. think you you lose. Focus more that these guys are little people, and you say, "Holy shit, these guys are actually really good." You know, and you know, you I have the voice of a of a really small hitman. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, and you got the laugh too, <laughs> like that. You know, <laughs> you know. Have you ever been in a movie? No, I haven't. No movies. No. And what's your business in uh, New York? Uh, I am a business finance analyst for a uh, for a, a cable company in New York, and I'll leave it at that. Now, what was it like for you uh, when you, you you went to college? I assume, yep. right? Uh, and there's absolutely yeah. nothing, you know, you're, you're, there's nothing wrong with you. You're physically all right. Yep. Uh, you're mentally, you know, fantastic. And when you went out into the job market, it has to be really weird because people get uncomfortable, right? Oh yeah, it's really, uh, you know, but that's been my whole life. So I've been I've been uh, dealing with that right away. So it's 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 up to me to make the person feel comfortable. So. Um, I just sort of kind of dealt with it my whole life. I mean, I went to Hofstra University, got my degree in finance, graduated in four years, went out, started looking for a job. And, um, you know, it was difficult, of course, but, man, you can't let that shit get you down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did anybody ever not hire you and you said, hey, man, I'm going to sue you for discrimination? No, I mean, because... You know, That's what I, I would have done. That's what listen, I, you know every what job I went to, you don't hire me. You fucked me because I'm a little person. That's what I'd have done. Man, you can't waste your time thinking about stuff like that. You got to put your time towards the good things. Really? Yep. Hmm. That's not how I live. <laughs> <laughs> I dwell on the negative. Yeah, Let me tell guy, you man. something. Can I be honest, Clinton? Sure. If I was three foot three, I would be pissed off twenty four <laughs> fucking hours a day. Okay. Twenty four fucking hours a day, I'd be pissed off. I would be a serial killer, you know, like Dexter. You know, Dexter kills other serial. I would kill anybody over three three. Okay, I would kill them all. Oh, well, listen, Clinton Brown, general manager. Go to New York Towers Basketball dot com. Yeah. Uh, Albertson, Long Island. Oh, what call should we take here? Which one? Which uh, we... Derek. I uh, let's go. Let's take some calls on. The, um, I don't see Derek here. Where, where am I? Yeah, he's on a line 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, Derek, it's Jay Thomas. How are you? Hello, Jay. Yeah. This is Derek. I'm a midget. No, you're not. You're a dwarf. <laughs> I call it hmm? a midget. And Why? I'm not offended by it. Mm -hmm. I'm offended by people who are offended by the word midget. <laughs> you're offended by people who are offended by the word midget. Yes. I think as midgets, we should be allowed to call each other as such. <laughs> Let me ask a question, Clinton. Do, do dwarf rappers use the word midget in their raps like black people use the N-word? You know? I, I don't know, man, but if this guy can rap, go more power to him. <laughs> right. Derek, what's your outside shot like, Derek? Uh, I have a range of about seven feet. Seven feet? All right. All right. All right. I, well, thank you, Derek, the, Derek the dwarf. <laughs> I've been to one of their games, Jay. Yeah. It's too short. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Derek. Yeah. Derek, you crazy man, you. I don't believe for one minute that was an actual dwarf. No. Now, of course, Clinton, it is perfect that you play at halftime. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> absolutely perfect. Clinton Brown, Dwarf Basketball, uh, NewYorkTowersBasketball.com. Thank you very, very much, and uh, good luck with everything, and we'll try and put a game together for the for the holidays, all right? Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for being cool. All right. By the way, uh, Clinton, yep. Clinton, yep. any of the guys on your team take steroids? <laughs> not that I know of, but when Nobody? I Nobody's juicing. Nobody's oh, juicing. Huh? I hope they are. You know, <laughs> get another inch out of themselves. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, all guys. right, that's 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 all the jokes. We any any other jokes? Um, anybody? We miss anything? Have a great week. No, it's hard uh, to make hard, hard to make jokes. I really like that guy. Yeah, he's a, yeah, good he's a wonderful dude. man. Wonderful good dude. Man.
Wonderful person. And, of course, we had that, that unfortunate Derek call that just came in. <laughs> Sounded like an angry uh, little let, guy. Uh, you horribly angry. angry. What's that? Let's go to... Yeah, uh, P real uh, quick. Uh, Justin of Connecticut. Yes, Justin, it's Jay Thomas. Uh, before we go another step further, uh, before we go to break, for burning the Quran, against burning the Quran, or <clears throat> would you like to burn Dave Stianchi? <laughs> uh, keep Dave Stianchi. I hear he gives good head and burn everything else. <laughs> burn. Dave Stianchi gives great head and burn the Quran. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Justin, what did you call about? Well, I, I quickly missed Clinton. I wanted to see if uh, Muhammad used the word midget if, they, if he would be into burning the Quran. I wanted to know if he's ever had a, had a pair of low hangers in the face. Playing these guys. Sure, one, some low hangers. One guy on uh, Twitter sent me a Twitter asking uh, ask yeah. him why they don't lower the basket so they could dunk, and then he writes, "That would be badass." <laughs> okay, all right, there we go. It's the Jay Thomas Show with Shuli and the rest of those fucking idiots. The Jay Thomas Show. I think we've stumbled on the root of your problems. You're listening to Jay Thomas. You think that everybody is in love. With you. You'd recognize him if it wasn't radio. Actually, everybody hates you. Howard 101. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Hey, this is Ira the Weatherman. You're listening. And you're listening to the J. Thomas Show. Howard 101. Someone's going out to the 7 train this morning. Yeah. All of you dwarfs out there, listen up. <laughs> Did he say we got some shit? Ain't that some shit? My favorite refrain is coming, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I've got some news for you. Yeah, go on to my tail, your little boy. See you around the world. This fabulous singer. Who is this? CeeLo. CeeLo. From Norris Barkley. I love it. Hey, great tune. Fuck you and fuck that bitch, too. That's a great song. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, in a few minutes, we will have uh, Basil Marceau, who ran for governor of uh, Tennessee. Uh, lost, but we'll, we'll play some of it. And he, this is a real American and uh, a man that uh, actually turned um, the Republican Party. He must be a Republican, right, Garrett? I'm sure he is from from Tennessee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a Republican. And he ran for the uh, U.S. House of Representatives and the governor. So this man, and we'll have him on. We'll hear uh, some of it from the uh, Internet. But first, let's go to Dave uh, Stianchi of the Poconos. Dave, we used your name in a sentence a couple of times. Uh, uh, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing to hear in the morning. Day, I gotta tell you it was a great thing to hear, wasn't it? And, you know, uh, we understand you own the funeral home and the Poconos. Yeah. We, we meanwhile, the... meanwhile, I called him one of the Stangy brothers from SC, SCTV that right. John Candy and Eugene Levy used to do. I want to tell you, Dave, that now we're no longer going to use your name, by the way. Well, uh, we have another contest coming in a few moments, another name, <laughs> name that sound. But thank Thanks for being a big part of the show, and we hope that it's changed the way you look at the world, all right? Uh, it, it sure has, Jay, and thanks very much. It, it, I know it, you it, already it, voted, but the survey is going kind of slow. Are you for burning the Quran? Anything or changed in your vote? Uh, 
I, you know what? I didn't vote before. That was uh, the other thing. You, you, you got me off too quick. Are you for, for burning, burning the Quran? Are you for or uh, against it? I don't know. I think it's it's there. They can do it if they want to. I think it's going to hurt our troops over. They can Jeez, do it if they want to. Is I, I guys give me a? Is that a yes? I, I know that, and I know that's vague. That is vague as hell. But no, I it isn't vague. They can do it I if they want you, to. Is his answer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, yeah you, I mean, you, but, I, but I don't think it's a very good idea, so am I for it? I would say no. I think uh, yeah, I'll just right. say no. He's against. Okay. No. Hey, Dave, I thanks a lot, man. It was uh, fun having hey, you Dave, on the show today. Congratulations. Did any of the dead people that you're working on sit up and go, you're a homo? Did that, did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, and thank God that didn't happen yet. Otherwise, I'd be running out of the funeral home, too, so. All right. How's but, Dave, thank you very much. Dave Stiansky. All right. uh, thanks, guys. Have a good All one. Right. Not thanks to be confused with Schmangy. Uh, let's go and listen to a little of Basil Marceau from a debate in Tennessee. All right, well, all this week, Channel 4 is working for you to help you make a choice in the governor's primary race. As part of that commitment, we have given all five candidates from the two major parties time during our news to let you know where they stand in their own words about the topics of their choosing. That's right, and the order was chosen by random drawing tonight. We hear from Basil Marceau. I'm Basil Marceau.com, the Republican candidate for governor. I'd like to recall all permit and registration for guns. Everyone can carry guns. If you kill someone, no, you get murdered. You go to jail. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to put what? plant grass or vegetation across the, the state or any vacant lot and right. sell it for gas so we can use it, use it for our expenses. Also, I'm going to remove all gold fringe flags from the state and fly the real flag with free stripes. <laughs> I also want to stop traffic stops. Set it up like the Supreme Court rule in Noel versus Iowa. If you can't find evidence in the car, you can't look. What? I want you all to vote for Basil Marceau. I want you to say the Pledge of Allegiance to a Republic in the morning when you come out. And we all pray to God and say amen. And right. everyone have a nice day. Ah, and I'll see right. you all at the polls. Well, Thank you. All, all right. right. Thank have you. a nice Stripper day. polls. <laughs> Basil, by the way, was a United States Marine from 1971 to 1973, serving in force uh, recon reconnaissance, and rose to the rank of Lance Corporal. God, hi, oh, I'm Lance Corporal. Yeah. He is an inventor, an entrepreneur, an importer, exporter, and a historian. What the? I'm dying to know what this guy invented. And he only has three teeth. Well, and he only has. Three teeth. I hear they're nice teeth, though. <laughs> yeah. They're the nice teeth. Basil three three on. Yeah. Ask him about it. Uh, let's go to Vito of Chicago. Hi, Vito. Uh, welcome hey. to the show. And um, uh, you got Daly is not going to be the uh, the uh, mayor there. Are you going to vote for Rahm Emanuel if he decides to run for mayor of Chicago? <laughs> Whoever doesn't take away the guns, that's about it. Oh, you want to keep your guns? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know I wanna, what? I wanna, we, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I okay. just wanted to make a comment about that guy Basil Marceau. He, yeah. he should be against genetic splicing so he get rid of that extra chromosome he has. <laughs> just because the guy, just because the guy's original enough to make his platform about planting grass. Yeah. Doesn't you mean like you have to attack grass for gas? Yeah. Uh, Vito, yeah. are you are you for burning the Quran against it, or uh, all would you like all religious literature burned uh, tomorrow in Gainesville? Well, that's the problem in itself. I, I don't want someone representing me from America from Gainesville. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's you, you think somebody in Gainesville representing our nation is the biggest problem? Yeah, I mean, just right. look at, I mean, come on. The, the next thing you know, they're going to be busting out the white sheets, and there we go. Off we go. If you right. had to pick a place that would represent America, where would that place be? Uh, Chicago. Chicago? Oh, sure. So so that is, you are against the burning of the Quran, but mostly because it's being done in Gainesville. Yeah, in Gainesville. Oh. Yeah, the, the, the other thing he's fighting against is uh, where to find that chemical to make that mess. That's about it. That's his, that's his main struggle. Now, Vito of Chicago, this is another um, sound that the Chinese Miss Universe made. She is literally imitating something they've asked her to imitate. Earlier, it was a lion. Garrett, let's listen. This this is a spoken word. This is a tough one. This is going to be a very difficult one. This is a spoken word, and she is not 
uh, greeting, or she is greeting somebody, but but is she's imitating something. Put on your thinking cap. Here we go. <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, that's the wrong one, Garrett. Oh, you want the? Uh... Yeah, what the? Wait a second. That was, just, a, just... that was a porn clip. I don't even think that was. Jesus, just it, that... it sounded like it sounded like the gimp from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> the gimp from Pulp okay, Fiction. This, this is the one. A good guess. Need. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> oh. All right, there you go. Hello. Mm. Uh, Vito, Vito of Chicago, what is she uh, imitating? <laughs> I don't know what animal. It sounds like a Japanese schoolgirl, though. Uh, kind of got Japanese, on it. She's Chinese. It sounded like actually a Chinese greeter at Costco, didn't it, Julie? Yeah. Just for a second. Hello. Oh, she's Hello. actually. She's actually. Hello. Hi. Now, now you know what? She's not saying hello. Let's hear it again. One more time. She says the L. <laughs> hello. She says hello. She does. Okay. Hello. Vito, thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. She is incredible. Uh, let's go to um, Jeff of Knoxville, uh, Tennessee. Uh, Jeff, first of all, um, uh, burn the Quran or not burn the Quran? Or burn all religious or all religious shit. literature. Yeah. Uh, well... I respect his right to do it, but wouldn't that kind of fall under the same guidelines as don't go into a theater and yell fire? Um, so, I no, don't know. he's just kind you of. You know what? Theater. Can I be honest? Can I be? Yeah, can I be book. really? Let me. I'm going to be honest theater. with you, Jeff. I don't give a fuck about what you said. It's either are you for burning the Quran, not burning the Quran, or burn everything else. I don't need all the fucking philosophy. Okay. Uh, no, don't burn the fucking Quran. All right. You know what? That And for everybody listening, I just want a simple answer. I don't need your your little sociology lesson or your little so political angry. science. So I'm not angry. angry. I'm being honest. People, that's what, you know, that's why people loved Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. The thought process, Jay. Oh, mm -hmm. People right. breaking it down. Now, Jeff, uh, did you vote for BasilMarceau.com when he was running for governor <laughs> in Tennessee? Oh. No, I did not. All right. All right. We're, we'll just now, we're just now getting people convinced that we actually wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the next step is thumbs. you got to make sure. So are you unhappy that we're focusing on Basil Marceau from the great state of Tennessee? Uh, it's just uh, another joke. Yeah. The hillbill from Tennessee mm -hmm. and... You know, he was going against the founder and CEO of Pilot Fuel, you know, in the heart of the Bible Belt, and he's wanting to grow grass and give everybody guns. <laughs> Are you more upset that he, uh, out of Tennessee, he's the only Mensa member that, that has come out of Tennessee? <laughs> hey, Jeff, I, I, I mean, I don't know if you know this or not. I worked in Knoxville, and I went to UT. My brother went to UT also. And then I worked in Nashville, and my first wife was from the Tri Cities. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I know all about. I spent a lot of time in in Tennessee. Let me ask you this: Who who would you rather uh, vote for? This is off the MiserableMen dot com. Basil or George Bush or George W. Bush? Man, that's kind of a that's a pick on me, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's a pick on me. That's a toss. Bush. All right, uh, Jeff of Bush. Knoxville, Tennessee. Bush. Um. Uh, let's go. By the way, when I lived there, everything was painted orange. The studio yeah. I worked in was orange. The big orange motel is where I impregnated. Take some the Lane Kiffin. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go. Would you like to burn Lane Kiffin? Absolutely. All right. That's one for Lane Kiffin. They don't forget out there in Tennessee. Being burned. Okay. Let's go. Uh, let's give him the the sound of the of the Miss Universe from China. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, the, la the laugh means nothing. With the hello, she's imitating something. What is it, Jeff? Uh, I got no idea. It just sounds to me like she's trying to say hello, like, like an American greeting. I she is imitating an American saying hello. Is that correct, Garrett? That's 
That's not good. There's no way. She's imitating. Um, I'll give you all a hint. It's not an animal this time. No, it is not an animal. That's for sure. Okay. Thank you, Jeff of Tennessee. All right. All right. Thanks. This wow. one's a real whopper. It, it, you know what? I'm. I bet you Basil will get it. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Darren of Louisville, Kentucky. Hello, Darren. How are you? Hey, Jay. How's it going? Um, what's going on there with that? Um, First of uh, all, that, that call coach, him in on a great that coach, <laughs> that coach of yeah. yours, um, oh. that what's his name, Patino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the, he's in a little bit of hot water, but something good did come out of it because the restaurant that that happened at mm-hmm. put a uh, special on their menu in honor of him. What is that special? Pa- pasta Prematura. Hey oh, coming at you. <laughs> I thought it was. Um, I thought it was, what was it? Smoke snatch with a little patino, <laughs> with a patino sausage glaze. With patino yeah. pit, potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a, a, so a he actually snapper. met her at the, at the restaurant. What's the name of that restaurant? Do you know it? Porcini's. Yeah. Uh, allegedly Porcini's. And then he got her in the bathroom and allegedly, uh, just screwed her in 10 seconds and that was that, right? That's, that's what they say. The other thing about that though that's interesting is now, as the close of the game, at least he's going to know what to do with 15 seconds left. <laughs> you must be appearing somewhere this weekend, Darren, in the Louisville area. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be me and uh, Shuli somewhere. Okay, now, are you for burning the Quran against it or burning all religious literature and Lane Kiffin? Mm. Yeah, I'd say don't burn the, the Quran. It's going to cause too many problems down the line. Don't, don't burn against. Thank you. Uh, Darren, um, uh, what can we do for you before we go into name that sound? Well, I enjoyed the interview you had with uh, Clinton a little while ago, and I wanted to uh, offer team transportation to him. I wanted to donate a smart car for him and his team. <laughs> All right. What a wonderful man you are. Thank uh, you. Darren, you out of material, or do we <laughs> wait around for another couple of lines, or what do we do? I, I'm just, you know, I'm just rolling with it right now. I have nothing written down in front okay. of me. I'm just going right. with the flow. What kind of phone do you have? It's amazing. Unbelievable phone. Oh, thank you. It's a, uh, it's a Cisco phone, actually. I thought it was Shuli in another room is what yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, it sounds That's really right. good. All right, let's play it, and then we have to move along. Let's play the sound. Go ahead. Hello. <laughs> the laugh means Hello. nothing. Hello. What is the Miss Chinese Universe contestant uh, imitating? You know, I've been trying to figure that out. I have no idea, but I, I know it's definitely going to give me nightmares tonight. Uh, that's a freaky sound. You can't think of, of, of what kind of frozen object she would, that speaks. What would that be? Hmm? Hmm? Um, frozen object that speaks. <laughs> like, like, a, like an object that's, you know, maybe inanimate, but it can speak. Hmm. I, I, Jay, I'm at a loss of words right now. It's something, if it was available to us, I was we would all that, want. You know what and I was it's thinking? it's a type of dance. Who, who Ooh. was, um, who was, um, um, a Charlie Sheen married to? Denise Richards? Yeah. Is, is she imitating Denise Richards? <laughs> <laughs> She's hmm? close. No? She's I close. mean, that was a nutty guess. She's very close to Denise Richards. All right, uh, Darren, thank you very much from Louisville. We'll continue. <laughs> Coming up, the great Basil Marceau. Stay where you are. Who you talking to? Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas. Corrupt and immoral. Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. We'll be back with more of this. Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas. The subject is show is terrible. Hey, Jay. That's Jay Thomas, the host. He's the idol of every man. He says what he wants and how he wants it all the time. It's the weirdest and the wildest. Jay Thomas Show. Horrible. Oh, that's so good. I just want to get your attention. Thank you, man. Thank you. When you call Basil Marceau's telephone, this is this is you don't hear ringing. This is, you hear usher. Yeah. Yeah. But girl, that's only if you. It's my jam right here. Yeah. I will not. Won't win no You just put that side of my face. I'll get 
Unusual uh, ringtone for such a conservative man. Hey, Basil, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show here at Howard 101. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, Basil, we have Shuley with us uh, Hi, Basil. today. Um, uh, Basil ran for governor of Tennessee. Basil Marceau, um, a former United States Marine. Uh, was a candidate for the Republican nomination for governor. I'm sorry that didn't work out for you, Basil. Now that's a fourth recon Marine. Fourth. Yeah, now I saw that. Now when you now did you what enemies of our nation uh, did you uh, uh, kill or bring uh, bring uh, enemy fire onto? Did you? Oh, I like to say I, I like to say I had one, but uh, in '72 uh, it was the bar over, so they didn't. There were no more enemies. So, so you were, were you at the tail end of Vietnam? Yes, I volunteered to go to clean up, but they yeah. they send the ones that didn't volunteer, and I I went on a cruise to South America. You didn't get to go to Vietnam and blast. Why uh, would they send the ones who didn't want to go? Yeah. Well, it always says it paid. They always says it always pays the volunteer. Damn! And then when you went to South America, there was no one to kill. Well, actually, they, they had an earthquake down there. I think it was Argentina and then one of those places down there. They sent me over there to stop people from looting. Uh, they took my gun from me and gave me a knife stick, so uh, I couldn't kill them there either. Jesus! Did you ever hit a couple people, though? I, I see I see you like my song on my phone. Yeah, now, yeah. that's an unusual choice for a man that I consider very conservative. Why would you choose Usher, and it, it says hot, you know, it has the word, I'm a hot man and all that. What's what's that all about? You're a married guy. What's Dad is home. Yeah, daddy's home and all. What's all that about? Well, uh, my wife's uh, girlfriend put that on for me. So, uh, <clears throat> and I don't think it sounded okay, but uh, I just left it on there. Now, um, you're not related to the mime at all, are you, Marcel? Marcel? Well, my dad told me he's he, he my uncle, but there's never no proof of it. He's, so Marcel uh, Marceau might be your uncle. Well, your, na your name is also almost Marcel. It's it's Basil. That's an interesting name. It's real close. Very uh, French. Very French. Now, what, what, what do you do for a living when you're not running for uh, governor of Tennessee? Well, I'm... I'm sort of a little disabled, and I spend most of my time in court systems. You spend most of your time suing people? I uh, guess su suing uh, government. Because government's the problem, isn't it? In my in my hometown, it is, yes. Yeah. Well, can I ask, Basil, uh, sure. we have a question going around throughout the show today, yeah. um, and we're taking a survey. Mm. Are, you, are you for the burning of the Quran? Are you against it? <clears throat> Or or C, uh, do you think we should burn all religious stuff and just get all that crap out of? Or the Basil, should we burn Lane Kiffin? Right. Go ahead. Your thoughts. Well, I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know Lane Kiffin, but uh, actually, uh, I, I'm. I'm. <clears throat> I'd be probably against it because everyone has the right to their religion. Hmm. Only only wow. thing where I differ, and I I think I I'm after reading the, the Constitution and all the minutes of the Congress, hmm. I believe that. <clears throat> All of our congressmen who takes office have to believe in in God, but no ministers, because it would be too much uh, influence. Because if we're in God we trust, well, then that's exactly what we are. So, place, so you have to believe not. in God. You, you, and you could, you can't be an atheist. And you, like a guy like me, I'm not sure if there is a God. If there is, I'll do a lot of talking. So. I don't know that I could sign. I mean, I, I guess I believe, but don't you think most people would just lie and say they believed in God and to get elected? Well, ten to one, but most most people, when you uh, when you when you uh, are saved, yeah. <clears throat> they gave yeah. you a certificate, like a birth certificate. You were saved, and they gave you a piece of paper saying you'd been saved and you're born again. That's right. Wow. And, now, and so you can be anything you want out there in, in American land, mm -hmm. but as our government, we should think as Christian principles because that's what our, our country is based on. And if, you, if you're an atheist, you can't really rule, you can't really ju judge, uh, you really cannot judge 
uh, your laws and stuff based on Christianity if you, if you believe in the Quran. Now, you know, one of the things, if you were elected, you wanted to ban law enforcement officers from charging suspects for anything except vehicle moving violations. I, that has to be the strangest plank of your platform. So you would not be arrested for murder or armed robbery or fraud or uh, wife beating. I don't understand why okay. why you I wanted you to ban. Huh? I think you got it back. Wrong. Yeah. I, I have it wrong. I think the only thing he wanted to stop was traffic stops. Oh, oh! I'm sorry. I did read it wrong. I did right. read it wrong. Right. I, I, th I thought you, I thought you wanted me. only traffic stops, and you could just shoot anybody you wanted to, and let the population deal with them. No, it's no. not. It's not me that that wants it. The Supreme Court ordered it uh, in, in uh, 1998, mm -hmm. and the President of the United States signed the Supreme Court ruling, knowing that it said out there a Knoll versus Iowa. Looking for crimes of no knowledge at a traffic stop violates the Constitution. If you can't find evidence for speeding in the car, you cannot look. What, what now, the oh, car drives by you going 80, and you have your, you know, your your gun, your radar gun, and it's in a 55, and I put my siren on, I give you a ticket. That is that legal? Yes. Oh. As long as you don't ask any other questions. So, oh, I uh -huh. smell alcohol on your breath. Can't go or there. Or I, sm I smell marijuana. You don't want anybody arrested for drunk driving. Well, actually, uh, uh, it says in the Constitution, you can't go through my wa through my papers without a warrant. My breath is like my papers, and mm -hmm. so is looking in my car. You have to have, you have, to have a warrant look through my window. It How many matter. times have you been arrested for drunk driving? Uh, never. I don't so drink. why do you care? Why I care? Well, the part that I care about is when they pull me over at a stop sign and put a gun to my head and pull my passion out of the car and kick the crap out of me because he was black. They stopped you, put a gun to your head, pulled your passenger out of the car, and beat them because they were black. Now, what exactly did they do wrong, Basil? Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the bad thing of it is, uh, as, uh, uh, the, the Supreme you Court a laugh out of it. I know. Now, the, the Supreme Court ruled traffic yeah. cops can't have guns. Meter may be put in place. Now they shoot me. What is that? Yeah. So, so you had a personal experience. Don't you think it was that one bad cop and it wasn't the whole system, Basil? I mean, come on. I mean, no, who I puts a I, gun to a I, head of a former Marine with three teeth and then beats... And, and they, the other guy was a Navy SEAL. Oh, no shit. And beats huh? a Navy SEAL. Was he wearing his flippers at the time? No, but I did, but I did tell the officer he was a Navy SEAL and they beat him harder. <laughs> so, so you didn't really so, help much. So this that cop that, uh, hated uh, this cop hated hated seals apparently also. Was he yeah, clubbing him like he was a wow. real seal? <laughs> now now Basil, it says here somewhere in this paperwork something about you not having all of your your you only have three teeth. That's why why don't you have more teeth? He's got well, I don't have four teeth. <laughs> How many four teeth? It seems every time I go to the dentist, yeah. they want like fourteen hundred dollars uh, just to fill it. So instead of filling it, who has fourteen hundred dollars or one tooth? No, but you have to turn around and pay two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars and get it yanked. Right. So you know, pain's pain, and uh, they don't even give you pain pills for it either. So, uh, hey, uh, so you have your teeth pulled without any sort of of anesthesia or pain relief at all. You just have them yanked out. Well, no, I, no, I didn't say that either. But I said, but uh, I had a choice: either paying the twelve hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Or pay, paying three hundred dollars, and then could, if you don't say yes to something, they won't write you a prescription for the pain. So you have to get it yanked out. They they give you a shot, yanked out, and then you and then they'll give you a pill. But the tooth's already gone. But you don't need a pill after you pull already pull it out. But before they pull it out, they won't give you a pill. Yeah, nice. yeah. Uh, Basil, I have a couple questions uh, from oh, uh, one, online. One, 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 okay. one, one, one second. So are you for health care reform or against it? Because now the government would pay for your teeth uh, in, you know, in a couple of years. Uh, I'm for health care reform, but not quite the way it's written. Okay. You know what's funny about this interview? Basil, I think we need to still bid it. 
Yeah, but Basil is making a lot of sense here, Shuley. Yeah. Making a lot of sense. That's yeah. I think we need happen. to still bid it. And, that's yeah. it. and everyone everyone gets health care like the Congress, mm-hmm. and then we then they'll take them. We put people in a, in a 200,000 group, group yeah. people, and then we still bid it. What, what's that's going on in the background yeah. there? You yeah, who's camp, that in the background? You campaign headquarters? Okay, uh, no, that's yeah. my wife. She's sitting over here. Uh, see, I'm right now I'm running as a write-in and as governor in Tennessee, mm-hmm. and she wants she wants to sing a song to everyone, okay. a jingle. Go ahead. Is, is, is there time for a jingle? Uh, uh, by the way, for those for of you that are that are writing, uh, it's B A S I L and it's M A R C E A U X. If you live in Tennessee, uh, when the when's the election in November? Yes. Yeah. Write so, in Basil Marceau. I am throwing the entire force of my name behind your candidacy. You've said some things here. I was going to make fun of you at first, but now... You understand what that means? You're going to get at least 18 mm-hmm. people that will mm-hmm. write you in and two mm-hmm. that will write in Baba Bowie. So. How many votes did you get uh, in during the primary? I got 3,000. Wow. Good Why do you think you? that is? But yeah. I, got, I got almost <laughs> 2 million hits on the Internet. Yeah. Wow. Now, does it bother you at any point that uh, some people are, are viewing your video in a kind of comical manner where maybe you're not taken as seriously as the other candidates? Does that bother you at all? Um, actually, uh, uh, when I made that first commercial, yeah, uh, I did good acting that day because I, I, I studied it. Like I, like I put all my Force Recon Marine stuff into it, right. and, uh, and I found out that you have to do something funny. To get attention. Well, it, yeah. Do we have right. that commercial that we just had? The uh, we'll play the commercial in a minute. Um, let's go yeah. to Basil's wife. What is your wife's name? Gitano. G E T O N A. Gitano. Gitano yeah. is wanted, your wife. She was supposed to sing a, a fifteen or thirty second jingle about my about my uh, candidacy. All what right. kind of name is Gitano? Where is she from originally? Uh, Baltimore, and she, she's she's <laughs> a. Yeah, uh, three quarter Indian. Ah, thank you. All right. I'm an American so Indian. An American. Right. How long have you and Gitano uh, been in holy matrimony? Uh, I'd say 37 years we've been married. Oh my when God. she, when, if, if you piss her off, can she make it rain on you? Just you? Well, actually, never had. We had a very big argument. We only had one in 37 years. So. Well, what was it about? The toilet seat, right? Let me guess. Uh. I stay uh, too long. I stay too long on vacation. Uh, ah, <laughs> well, that's why I thought it's maybe, vacation. <laughs> I thought you'd you'd thrown maybe a pox filled, uh, um, you know, blanket into her teepee. <laughs> so here she is. Hey, uh, right. Basil, would your wife like some background music for the jingle, or is she doing this dry? Some background music for the jingle. Well, whatever you want to do, she can do it. She can do, do you it have anyway. a guitar? Do you have a ukulele or a piano? What are we? Is she you going to use an instrument? I can call a midget with a kazoo. No, you can't. No. Uh. <laughs> hey, sorry, she had she had a little bit of throat, uh, throat surgery. So here, here she is, Katana. She's oh, had throat America surgery. This song's going to be awesome. Okay, uh, we, you know what? I have to tell you, I I, t- I I think that if we want everybody to stay with us, ah. Uh. We should go to a break. Ah, <laughs> telling me. Don't yeah, we'll go to a break. Well, what's that? You say you want to go to a break first. Yeah, we we're going to go to a break, and then when we come back, Basil Marceau, and who I am backing with the full force of the popularity of Jay Thomas, the easiest show to get in on, the show that made um, dwarf basketball what it is today, and then we will hear. Her sing a jingle for the man that I think is going to be the next governor of the great state of Tennessee. Stay where you are. <laughs> You're listening to the Jay Thomas Show <laughs> on Howard 101. And the scene is wrong. The scene is wrong. Here are the thrill seekers. Oh my God! Jay Thomas. <laughs> the Jay Thomas Show. Howard 101. Basil Marceau from Tennessee, who I am backing now as an independent for governor. Um, vote for Basil, and if he wins, he will immune everyone in Tennessee from state crimes for the rest of their lives. Um, 
Basil, is your wife on the phone? Yes, I am. How are you? Um, uh, your, your name again is Gitana? Gitana. Gitana, how are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. And you are a Native American from Baltimore? Yes, I am. What what, what tribe is that? Pardon me? I said, what tribe is that? Cherokee. You're a Cherokee Apache. Indian. You're a Cherokee, Cherokee and Apache. Apache. How did you and Basil meet? How did this this American love story well, start? Well, my brother brought him home from uh, the military. Mm-hmm. I set my eyes on so I fell in love. Been, the, been together ever, ever since. You, you I've, just, had thro- you, I've had throat surgery, so. You've had throat surgery, I understand. Yes. He, um, mm, he morning. came in the room in the Marine Corps uniform from his uh, force reconnaissance unit, and you just fell madly in love with him. Oh, yes, I did. How and many, te- how many teeth did he have when you first met him? All of them. He had all of his teeth. And over these yes. 37 the old, years. The good old days. He's down to three teeth. Been a long road. Now, um, yes, he is. before you sing uh, the jingle, we have some questions that some uh, people on the internet have asked us here at uh, the Jay Thomas Show. Uh, my friend Shuley, you, you want to ask the question? Sure, of, uh, sure. Of Mrs. Uh, Marceau. Uh, yes, hello, Mrs. Marceau. How are you? Pleasure to speak to you. I'm Mrs. Still Marceau, fine. are you, you for or against the burning of the Quran? By the way, am I for or against what? The, bur- the burning of the Quran, the burning of all religious literature, or Lane Kiffin. Everybody has a right. All right. That's Except that's for another, Lane. All right. It's another against. Okay, Let's go. go uh, question go. number one from a gentleman by the name of Three Days uh, would like to know, how many teeth uh, do you have at this point in time? Um, most of them. Most of them. Okay. Most of them. But I teeth. do need teeth, teeth work. Right. Well, we, I think we all do. You know, a lot in common. I need a tooth every now and again. I have uh, a toothache now. Uh, you have a toothache right this minute. I have a toothache right now. Could be this show. Um, and can't afford and cannot afford. You know what you might want to look into is uh, if there's a local school of dentistry around there, uh, the, you can actually go get a tooth pulled for about 50 bucks at one of these schools mm-hmm. from yeah, a student. Yeah, I want to fix. Uh, you want to completely. Well, you know what? Uh, when Basil's governor, you can walk in to the University of Tennessee Dental School and go, "My husband's the governor. Right. Fix my teeth." Right. Okay. All right. Okay. You and got you know. that right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, Are you ready for my jingle? Not yet. We got some more questions. Two more questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do your does your husband or you or both of you uh, ever smoke grass or smoke grass currently? I hate pot. Okay. Don't now smoke that's it. a campaign. Never smoked it. Never and smoked. That's all there is to that. Well, Basil wants to sell um, grass to. What, what is he talking about? No, Bro- not grass. He, he 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 wants to sell. Um, well, he can answer them better than I can. Well, okay. Well, okay. What's the next question, Julie? What is nine times seven from a D. Agar? What's what? Nine times seven. Nine times seven. Yes. Nine times seven, six to three. Perfect. I and heard right. Basil give that answer. I did too, but that's all right. You know what? Behind what? every person is another person giving them the answer. <laughs> I don't know if you, you know that saying. Right. It. It's a good you one. Got that right. Okay, let's hear uh, the the jingle for Basil Marcel Sr., former Force Recon Marine in the First okay. Freedmen's Bureau, great man of 2008, uh, gave himself that award, and running for governor of Tennessee. This is his campaign jingle <laughs> by his lovely Native American wife, Katana. Okay. BasilMarceau.com is a man with a solution. He'll put in this and kick out the rest. He'll break your constitution. Mm-hmm. BasilMarceau.com is a man with the law. Mm-hmm. And you can bet he'll be there to fight for your calls. BasilMarceau.com is a man with the solution. Mm-hmm. He'll put in this and kick out the rest. He'll break your constitution. <laughs> Wow. I'll tell you what. Well, you know what? Uh, 
That's okay. You sounded great. Uh, we have chosen some music. We, we think you need a little music. <laughs> so play the music, and then we'll let you sing the jingle one more time. All right, hit the one music. One more time. Kim. You hit, no, the, hit the music. Here we go. All right, go ahead. JasonMarceau.com is the man with the solution. He'll put his best and kick out the rest. He'll break your constitution. JasonMarceau.com yeah. is the man with the law. Mm-hmm. And you can bet that he'll be, be there to fight for your cause. And listen, my friend, very close to what I have to say. And be it at the code on the, on the next voting day. JasonMarceau.com is the man with the Solution, you'll put it in the bed and kick out the rest, you'll break your constitution. Yeah! Wow. Gatano, <laughs> and uh, wish Basil all the best, and thank you so very much for taking time <laughs> out of the, your busy it campaign. It was really good talking to you. Are you all right? And everybody there, write him in. Well, write him in, Basil oh. Marceau. Write That's him it. in. And would you give us the spelling, please, the correct spelling of his name? Awesome. His name? A S I L John M A R C E A U X. Wonderful. And mine is G E T O N A Lee. Um, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are we going to write your name in also? <laughs> Should we write you in also? I don't think they're writing you. Are you running for lieutenant governor? <laughs> no, um, I'm just going to back him up. I'm behind him all the way. I don't think you ought to give the spelling of your name. It could get confusing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Gatano, t- uh, give give Basil a big uh, uh, almost all your Maybe teeth we can get like a political editorial from them every now and then. Every now and then. He wants to talk to you again. Yeah, put him okay, on. Okay, sure, absolutely. Thank gotcha. you, Gatano. Wow, man. I got one question for him. When a, You know what? When a wife what? backs a husband like that, you don't get that kind of love and backing very often in this crazy world. Hey, Basil, you got yourself a keeper there, my friend. You do. Did you see me on uh, WOP uh, FM in Cleveland? Of course we did. Yes, we did. Am I pretty? Gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Stunning vision of Unbelievable. beauty. Unbelievable. I like, go there. I mean, it, you reminded me of that woman that Lewis and Clark met. <laughs> I, I say this with all due respect. I'd hit too. that. I'd yeah, hit that. I would hit that. Yeah, we were all, we're fantasy. We're thinking, you know... Pictures, you know what I'm saying? Naughty pictures of you yeah. and Basil in the in the in the governor's mansion. Did you Poking get any of them? You didn't mm-hmm. get any of them. No, <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, All right. had what me. was that? What was that? Uh, what was the woman's name that Lewis and Clark met? And one of them married him. Um, what's her name? I have no idea. I don't either. Poke a drunk ass? Sacca- no, no. Sacagawea. Mm-hmm. I don't. It's Sacagawea. Yeah. You reminded me of Sacagawea. Thank you. All right. I, well, I paint, I I draw, mm-hmm. and charcoal, and everything is mm-hmm. about basil. Wow. Now, when you draw in charcoal, do you use the regular charcoal or the charcoal that, that lights itself? Charcoal that lights itself. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. Basil, put him back on the phone. We'll say goodbye to him, and we'll move along with our lives. And thank you, darling. Okay, sweetheart. Talk to you later, Please. Princess. Basil? Basil? Hello. Basil. Basil, thank you. Yes. Wonderful meeting you and your wife. Wonderful, and good luck. wonderful woman. And you we'll got call there. you back again. The election's not until November, correct? Hey, yes. I always want to say, uh, I want everyone to uh, go to YouTube, and uh, within the next week, I'm going to put a poll up there to see if everyone wants me to run for president. Well, this show wow. does. Yeah, we do. And uh, I have one last question from uh, the Internet. You have a lot of fans on here. Uh, Phil Otto asks if you can say the following sentence, I thought I saw a putty cat. I thought I saw a putty cat. Perfect. Perfect. That's all we needed. Bravo. Thank you so much. Basil. Hey, but i tell you what I did see. What I was in, when I was in Hollywood, I saw a Spider-Man on a pole. Wow. <laughs> Get out of That's here. That's cool, man. Hey, hey, go, to, go to my video up there that, that had me yeah. standing on the street mm-hmm. uh, with an old man with a beard. Uh, Hollywood, you'll see Spider-Man hanging on the pole waving to me. I'm going there right now. Okay, bud. Thank you so much, Basil. Hey, thanks for calling me and uh, uh, help, help, help me stop people. I want everyone to have guns in America you so we can you. protect ourselves against our government so they can never... 
Hmm? Yeah, hey, Basil, you know I what, Basil? You. Basil, I only wish you were holding your gun on me right now. I wanted to tell you, when I, I was so excited coming into work today, uh, this morning, because I was going to talk to you, and uh, it's a beautiful day out, and I saw a cloud, and, and it kind of looked like you, and I just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you're welcome to call me any time you want. How do you uh, feel about same-sex marriage? Pro or con? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, thumbs down. Ah, against it. You know, what if, well, what if uh, both chicks are really hot? Yeah. The Constitution says you can do anything you want, but if you want to do it, you won't have any right. You won't have any benefits, and uh, I, I personally won't marry you. What what about uh, the? You wouldn't marry a man next time and around. And, and I won't adopt any children. No mm. kids either, because they all become big queers, don't they? Well, I, I, I don't really put it that way. I say the character of the child would be tarnished. It sure will. Wow. That, to me, is you're a big queer. A beautiful, beautiful way of putting it. All right. Basil, thank you. We've had a great time. Thank you. Yeah, uh, call me anytime. Okay, buddy. Bye-bye. Wow. Man, I tell you, this, this uh, election thing is exhausting. Absolutely is exhausting. By the way, uh, we've eked out the, uh, it's, it's seven so far against <laughs> the Quran burning. It's the greatest interview ever. We ever it's, did. It's four for the Quran being burned. They're saying one they for, want him on every week. <laughs> all religious literature and one for Lane Kiffin. To be <laughs> one for Lane Kiffin. You know how out of it he is? He's from Tennessee. He doesn't know who Lane Kiffin is. No, has no who, idea. Who, who, the infants know who that guy is. Let's go to Wayne of Tennessee. Uh, Wayne, welcome to the show. Uh, we yeah. have a couple of things for you. Uh, are you a fan of this Basil Marceau? Would you vote for him? We're backing him. Yeah, absolutely not. Listen, we're not all dumb shits out here, but obviously you can tell by how long I've been waiting on the phone. I got some passionate feelings about this Bernard Grand. Sure. We need to come to our senses and realize that ain't the answer. I need what we need to do is put a crispy coating on the Muslims themselves. They need to go up in flames. <laughs> crispy you want to burn? On you want to actually? I, let me get my pen out. You want to actually cover the Muslim in some sort of crispy lighter fluid? Lighter fluid. I gotta get it quick, so I'm working. I just want to call Shuli out for being one of the biggest Jew haters I know. He, he never misses an opportunity to say some disparaging things about them lovely, homely Jewish girls. I've always had a wonderful time with them personally. Yeah. So I gotta run now. Well, let me tell you something. Right. Hang out with them for a little while, and in about ten years, their fucking ass drops down to their goddamn uh, heels. By the way, I, it's like talking to a a, a Robert Duvall sound alike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, let's move to Pete of Vermont. Hello, Pete. It's Jay Thomas. We have not forgotten the contest. Uh, Pete, first of all, do you believe in burning the Quran, not burning the Quran, all religious uh, literature, or Lane Kiffin? Well, I'm uh, I'm with Shuley, and uh, I say uh, burn them all. What the hell? Burn all religious literature. I mean, we've tried it their way, and look where it's gotten us. So let's How try about the thing I right. said earlier that the, the dwarfs wanted to burn tall people? Is that a good idea? Sure. Why not? Right. I'm not tall. tall. People. All right. You're not tall. I know. To Who a cares? dwarf you are. That's right. Wait a minute. Did you just say dwarf? <laughs> he did. That sounds like a a, a black uh, midget <laughs> rapper. On Star Trek. Dwarf. You know. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, play the play the uh, Chinese uh, Miss Universe. Okay, well. Here we go. Oh, you got so excited you you forgot about the Hello. contest. Hello. <laughs> Hello. What is she imitating? That little that woman there. What is she imitating? Is he gone? Went it's through all that shit and the guy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste! What a total waste! This guy on Twitter, Judd writes, uh, "Quote mm -hmm. of the day." <laughs> Am I pretty? <laughs> I'm trying to find a picture of her from. Oh, oh, don't oh ruin trust it. me, don't hey, hey, it. Don't, hey don't, Gary, trust me. No, just ruin it for me. Uh, she was on TV in Cleveland, <laughs> by the way. Uh, let's go to uh, Jason. You're in Michigan. What's that sound, Jason? What's that sound? I see some howling wind. She's imitating a howling wind Saying that says hello. Hello. Howling. Wind. <laughs> Hello. Is that correct, Garrett? A howling wind? That is... What was that? Oh. Not correct. All right. Uh, Jason in Michigan, for the Quran burning, against, 
all religious literature, tall people are Lane Kiffin. <laughs> I'm with Julie. I say burn it all. Stop burn everything. Bo- that's Making that's a late it. comeback here. <laughs> Making late a big push. comeback. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Tim. Tim, you're in Pennsylvania. Uh, give me the sound. Now this is a. It, it, it's it's a uh, an inanimate object. Inanimate object, and she is imitating it. What what is it, Hello. Tim? Hello. What is it? Uh, is it a robot? It's a robot. Oh, That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Tim, what is your last name? Tim? <laughs> Tim knew better. He heard what we did to the other guy. Oh, you chicken shit. <laughs> we were going to use his name. Tim's a, a big cock pumper. You yeah. know who you are. Imitating. Uh, you know, is there one more sound that this lovely girl made? There Let me is. see if I give me one of them. Let me see if I can even okay, guess it. Google, Google, Google. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> That's a cow. Correct. Thank you. Why does everything she does sound retarded? <laughs> She's. Pong <laughs> chu. <laughs> Pong chu. That's a bomb going off. <laughs> Somebody sneezing. Pong chu. <laughs> well, it's a one retarded farm over there. Hello. I, I don't know about you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? It's time to say so long. <laughs> I had more fun today than I've had in a long time. <laughs> and you know what? We didn't get paid for it. No, uh, not even close. <laughs> okay, well, we'll do it again some other time. Monday, I'll be back at Sirius 108, XM 139. Surely you're around uh, town this weekend. You're I'm at home this somewhere. weekend kicking it. We're, uh, right. we'll go to JewGoneWild.com for any and all details. All right, JayThomas.com is me. See you later. Hundred one.